Tennessee's passing game rediscovered the Midas touch. Todd Marinovich had the finest day of his career. And football became fun again for the Big Redhead. So as the second half of the conference season starts, neither team can afford a loss. The loser can forget that shot at the Roses. It's USC hosting the Wildcats of Arizona next. the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Prime Ticket Network presents USC football. Today it's an important matchup in the race for the Roses as the number 11 rated USC Trojans play host of the Wildcats of Arizona. It's also homecoming here on the campus of the University of Southern California. That's Alumni Park and of course is where Tommy Trojan lives. Thousands of old grads back to take a look at the campus and to renew some old memories. We should have a crowd of about 80,000 here at the Coliseum for this one. Hello, I'm Tom Kelly. My broadcast partner is Mike Garrett, the gentleman who won the Heisman Trophy back in 1965. Interesting matchup today, Mike. Arizona loves to run the ball. The Trojans love to play run defense. You're right. And this is a must game for both teams. And Arizona must win today, Tom, to get a bold shot somewhere. And SC must win to keep up with Washington. So a big game. Indeed. Speaking of Washington, the Trojans were beaten by the Huskies 31 to nothing. But since that game, the Trojans have really played some outstanding football. Consider these statistics. Since that loss to the Huskies at Ohio State, they amassed 450 yards, allowed the Buckeyes only 79. Back home against Washington State, 466 yards for the Trojans. The Cougars got only 20 yards rushing. And last week up at the farm, Stanford, the Trojans getting 500 total yards and the Stanford Cardinal getting only four. Those are very impressive stats. Yes, and that means the Trojans front four is playing well. The, guy, the key guys, Don Gibson, and they must play well today against a run offense from the Wildcats. Speaking of people who played well, how about Todd Marinovich, the sophomore sensation and quarterback for the Trojans? Last week, 338 yards. He caught a touchdown pass and passed for three others. He was Pac-10 Player of the Week. And on the fourth offensive play of the game, the 77-yard bomb to Gary Wellman. Perfect placement. He has to throw it between the cornerback and the safety covering. Wellman keeps a good concentration, catches the ball, shows you his speed, touchdown Trojans. That was a young man who flashed across the screen there, trying in vain to knock the ball away or at least knock Wellman out of bounds. That was Jimmy Klein. He's the son of former Trojan All-American Bob Klein. Well, you know about Todd Marinovich. Now, how about these Arizona quarterbacks? Dick Toomey will change quarterbacks almost every other play. He puts in Ronald Veal, takes him out, comes back with George Malaulu. Malaulu is the left-hander and Veal's the right-hander. And frankly, Mike, these guys would rather run with the ball than throw it. They're basically the same. They run at you very well, pass enough to keep you off balance, but they want to run the ball. Well, the Trojans have lost one conference game, and Arizona has lost two, and last week's loss to Oregon State really was disaster for them. They'd like to have some revenge for that. Revenge they want. Best way to salvage the season is beat the Trojans and go on. Indeed. They haven't had much luck against SC. The series is 15-1 in favor of the Trojans, and Arizona won here last in 81. Should be an exciting day. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back right after we pause for this message. By Coors. Enjoy the original taste of Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. By your Chevrolet and Geo dealers. Come in today to see the exciting 1991 line of cars, trucks, and vans. And by First Interstate Bank. We go the extra mile for you in more cities and states than any other bank system. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. We expect 80,000. They're still coming in. Most of the tunnels and entranceways are still lined with people. And coming out of the floor of the Coliseum, the University of Southern California Trojans. Arizona came out a moment ago. We had the coin toss, and Arizona won the toss. The Wildcats uh, deferred, which means they'll get the ball to start the second half, and the Trojans will receive it to get the game underway. As I told you a moment ago, SC leads in this series 15 games to one. 
They're eight and one since Arizona joined the Pac-10, and the only Arizona win over SC, a 13 to 10 victory, came here at the Coliseum in 1981 when Larry Smith, now the head coach of the Trojans, was coaching the Wildcats. So it's kind of old home week for Smith, although there are perhaps only one or two, as you see, Larry, players on this Arizona roster that he would have uh, recruited. Uh, one of those would be Singleton, I believe, Mike, but outside of that, I can't think of anybody that he actively recruited uh, while he was at Arizona. But it's still his old home week for him. He had 10 years over there, and he has a lot of friends in that area, and he remembers uh, with fondness his, uh, his tenure over there. Well, all right, as Smith patrols the sidelines, how about Daryl Lewis, considered not only the best cornerback at Arizona, but the best in the Pac-10, and maybe a very big contestant for the Jim Thorpe Award. He's out of the Los Angeles area. He'll be up against Gary Wellman, and boy, that is a matchup. Two guys about the same size, Mike, who can really pick him up and lay him down. Daryl Lewis is a former running back, and what he does very well, he's a tough guy. He likes to get a lot of body contact, and Wellman, who's very fast, will have to combat that kind of uh, hitting today. So it's a good contest. Two guys basically the same size, Tom, and who are pretty good football players. Dick Toomey, head coach at Arizona in his fourth year. He, of course, replaced Larry Smith. Toomey was an assistant coach at UCLA, and before he came over to Arizona, he was in uh, the University of Hawaii, the head coach over there for the Rainbows. So Toomey patrols the sidelines. He is still a little bit in shock, of course, over that hammering that he got at the hands of uh, Oregon State last week, 35-21. It was, by all accounts from Arizona fans and followers, a game not unlike the Trojan game at Seattle, where whatever could go wrong would and did. All right, Wildcats will be kicking off, and today's kickoff is brought to you by Coors Light. The one that won't slow you down. The silver bullet is the right beer now. Arizona to kick off. Costin has it teed up for the Trojans. Travis Hanna and Curtis Conway awaiting the kickoff. A lot of Southern California youngsters on this Arizona team. It's coming to Conway. He waits for it at the three. The speedster out of Hawthorne. Swings to the far side. In and that went back up. Mike, he had the right idea, but he started in and stayed in too soon. Should have put a little fake on him and then gone quickly outside. He's a Roland, great. Excuse me, Mike. Roland was there to make the stop, and SC will have it first and ten, and they've marked the ball just outside the 15-yard line. One of the things the Trojans want to do today is just keep the continuity of offense, pass very well, and, and then come right back at the run and control the line of scrimmage. Todd Marinovich, of course, the sophomore who was Pac-10 player of the week, is in at quarterback for the Trojans. They come to the line of scrimmage, like wide to the left is Wallace. Wellman is set wide to the right. Play action fake, Marinovich rolling the throw. Looks up field, throws. Almost intercepted, but it is caught. With the ball is Yanni Jackson at about the 25-yard line. You know, I think Marinovich wanted to go to somebody like Wellman, but Wellman was open and then was not open. So he had to settle for Jackson. Lockwood, Mizio Royster, Gary Wellman, Larry Wallace, who had that tremendously acrobatic catch against Stanford last week, and Yanni Jackson, who caught the first pass of the afternoon. Up front, Harlow Tucker, Craig Gibson, whose brother Don Gibson is a stalwart on defense, the young freshman getting a starting spot. Decent Moody, the balance of the offensive line. Wellman is flanked wide to the right as Marinovich with these statistics. Seven touchdowns, four interceptions, and well over 1,200 yards. Hands off to his tailback. Royster slips his way up the field to the 30-yard line. He's got a first down, and then a raft to white Jersey Wildcats pounce all over him. Hopkins leading the parade. It'll be first and 10. USC and mark the ball at the Trojan 30-yard line. Defensively for the Wildcats, and they're a tough crew, make no mistake about it. Ty Parton, Glanick is in at the nose guard spot, and Reggie Johnson. Hopkins, Case, Wade, and Alexander in the linebacker spot, and of course the secondary is led, as we told you, by Lewis. Burden, Lewis, Holden, and Jeff Hammerschmidt. High formation. Wide to the right side is Hannah. Marinovich pitching to his tailback. Royster to the sidelines. Got five, maybe six as he carries up to about the 36-yard line, and Burden comes up from the secondary to make the stop. He's a senior out of Riverside, one of a couple of dozen youngsters out of the Southern California area. 
When in doubt, you go student by left or right. They go left this time, just fine blocking. And the tailback here just has to kind of pick his way and pick up a yard before Burton gets it. And Mazer Rocha had an easy run that time for five yards. It'll be second and five. Number 75 up front throwing a nice contain or good block was uh, uh, Mark Tucker. Stood his man up, moved him back out of the way. Trojans have it on their own 36-yard line. Second down and a short five. No score. First possession. Beautiful day and a big crowd on hand. That's Jackson in motion. Marinovich, play action, rolling to his right. Left-handed throw, remember, has some time. Has a man. It's caught. See if it's in bounds. It's going to be at the 39-yard line, and the man who caught it is Jackson, the tight end. And suddenly, with a 25-yard completion, Jackson has caught two, and he now is a favorite target all of a sudden of Todd Marinovich. They've got a lot of people to throw the ball to. Now what's beautiful here is Todd's looking down. He has number four, Daryl Lewis, in a bind. He doesn't know to come up and get pressure or cover the tight end. Yanni then straddles the, uh, the out-of-bounds line right there. Look at two feet in, catches the ball. That's a good play there. Well, I tell you, that's a ballet-type move. Market the Arizona 39. First possession, SC with the first and ten. One of the Wildcats is shaken up. And the referee, who is Jim Springer, is asking for the trainer to come out from the Wildcats' side. Lewis is the man. He seems to be shaken up. He was the young guy who was certainly picked upon and abused a bit by the Bruins of UCLA. And all of a sudden, with little time left in the game, he stepped in front of a toss and took it all the way back. The big touchdown that won the game. He comes off a little shaken up. He'll have to come out for at least one play. No, Tom, he's a big guy. He's the, the captain in no, the secondary. And Louis and Darrell Lewis is be a big loss because uh, he has to cover Wellman today, and if he's not there, they may be in big trouble. Well, Jay Phillips is his backup, and he's a freshman, a 6 280 pounder They're sending in uh, Bobby Rowland instead, a junior. So Rowland, number five, steps in. SC first down at the Wildcat 39. This drive started on the Trojan 16. High formation. We're in the first period. Played about two and a half minutes. There's no score. Wellman wide left. Long count by Marinovic. Gives the ball to his fullback. Lockwood head down. Gets to about the 36. I get the feeling with the long count at the line of scrimmage, Mike Garrett, that he was audibleizing there, changing something up. I think you're right, Tom. But it did give uh, Yanni Jackson a chance to go after the uh, linebacker of the Wildcats. He just blew him off the line. That's why you saw Todd, uh, the fullback there, Lockwood pick up about, what, about three or four yards on that play. Down to the 36, which is a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Darren Case and Reggie Johnson were there to stop him defensively. Again, Wellman wide to the right. Jackson now is an H-back. And the give to the tailback. Royster into the secondary. Spins to the 30. Well, this young sophomore really, uh, as Hammerschmidt comes up along with Case to bring him down, then he shows you some good moves. Uh, even on a short four or five yard gainer, he, he's not easy to bring down. You know, Tom, you've been here and seen them all run, and now you comment about Royster. He spins here. He doesn't give you much to hit, and he keeps movement going all the time, and he picks up the good yards. He gets it to the 30-yard line, and it's going to be third down for the Trojans and about a yard to go. 383 yards to lead the Trojans. Three touchdowns, rushing 64 times, averaging six yards a carry. The fullback, Lockwood has got the first down at the 20, at the 15, at the 10. Five touchdown, USC. 30 yards, and Lockwood puts it in the end zone. And the Trojans go 84 yards for the opening drive, and it's four. For Scott Lockwood, Mike, that's his second touchdown of the year. And the key guy, 75, that's Tucker, who's going to blow his man out. Lockwood shows you he's tough, but now he's going to show you his speed. He's going to just pick it up, and you're going to notice he's not even worried. He's just going to glide in. He's a 9'6 man. He looks very quick. I would hate to shortchange the son of a former great Trojan. That is his fourth touchdown run of the year. Scott Lockwood puts the Trojans on the board. An 86-yard drive. A couple of catches by Yanni Jackson. Basically, the Trojans running it up the field. And now Quinn Rodriguez out of a hold by co-captain Pat O'Hara. The kick is up, and it's good. Time out of the field with 11.06 remaining in the first quarter. 86-yard, he makes it an 84-yard drive in the... Lead Arizona seven to nothing. We'll be back right after this message. 
First quarter, 7-0, USC over Arizona. Scott Lockwood caps off the 84-yard drive with this 30-yard touchdown run. This is a beautiful play. Lockwood's going to get hit by the safety here, Hammerschmidt. You watch him take that hit, doesn't bother him, keeps his balance, and he just takes off running. Lockwood with his fourth touchdown run of the year, and now we'll have Runnerstrom to kick off. 84 yards in seven plays. Two big plays outside of that 30-yarder. 25-yard toss from Marinovich to Yanni Jackson. Michael Bates is standing in the middle. Love it. And along with Vaughn, as Runnerstrom gets set to kick off for the Trojans. Michael Bates, who is the conference sprint champion. Boy, can he run. <laughs> That's Love it. But number 20, the guy in the middle, is the fellow you don't want to kick the football to. Runners drum hits it. It's end over end and deep coming to this side. And it's going to be out of bounds. It'll come out to the 35-yard line. And Arizona will have it there in very good field position as the Trojans trying to kick it away from Bates, obviously, kicked it away from everybody. They're going to kick it over again. Tom, on that play, uh, Runnerstrom is kind of afraid, as you, as you stated. Number don't, number five, number don't 20. Don't kick it to this kid, number Mike, 20. Michael uh, Bates is something special. He will come back at you. And he's a tough guy. He doesn't mind taking him in there and getting a little beating and keep his feet and come at you. He's 5'10 and 196 pounds. He's out of Tucson, Amphitheater High. And everybody, including the Trojans, tried to recruit this young man. He's part of a great sprint team over at Arizona. You can see he's averaging almost uh, 24 yards of return. Love at 18 and McGill 14, although McGill is in there. They've got Vaughn as the other man across the way. Here's Runnerstrom to kick it again. They set him back to the 30 now. SC leads 7-0 and Runnerstrom hits the football. Low bouncing kick coming down. Bates bobbles it, picks it up at the 16. Across the field, cuts back, horse collared and driven down from behind at about the 32-yard line. Good coverage by the Trojans. And down there very quickly was Chesley. All right, going out is George Amalaulu out of Carson, California, sophomore, 193-pounder. His stats are interesting. He's got... Uh, 112 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. He has completed 22 of 51 passes. No touchdowns and three interceptions. It's obvious uh, he and uh, co-quarterback Beal would rather run it than throw it. Hand off. That's Greathouse. Runs into a lot of Trojans. They bring him down. Over there was Stefan Pace. Coming up from the secondary, getting a start as the young freshman Jason Oliver. Up front for Arizona, or at least we'll take a look at their offense. Hampton, McGill, Greathouse, you saw him carry the ball a moment ago. Jan and Griffin, those are the backs and receivers. Up front, Fina, Warren, Toffelmeyer, Finian, Ganolfo, and Smith, the offensive line. Pay attention, or you'll have to say Finian, Ganolfo. <laughs> the snap, play action, going to throw it. Alulu going deep, got a man everybody goes falling down intended for Bates another flag goes down and you know what they're going to hit Bates for taunting they're going to throw the flag at Bates after they penalize the Trojans for offensive uh, pass interference another flag at the line of scrimmage and with Bates taunting the defender Hopkins he gets a flag for that this will be an interesting one to sort out take another look at this Mike yes there's Hopkins trying to cover him he knows he's beat because Bates can really fly and there's Hopkins goes over you see the ball there's the penalty I told you about I didn't mean to interrupt you Mike but I wanted the crowd to hear that pass interference and um, unsportsmanlike conduct now you watch Bates right there as he's taunting Hopkins see not a five beta kappa move you know the college kids and even in pro they do that too much they want to show off this time it cost the player so it is going to be second down Second and nine. Malabulu as flags go down. Hands off. And straight ahead was McGill. 
either McGill or Vaughn. They've got Vaughn as a running back. See about the flag. Ball start against the offense. Dead ball. I wonder why they ran the play. Couldn't get the whistle blown in time. That's interesting, isn't it? Dead ball. I think the whistle, start. the whistle was blown. The flag was thrown just before the snap. The team just went through the motions. That's why it's so closely timed. Going to be second down and about 14 yards. Ball is back to the 28. Quarterback is Malaulu. Back to throw. Comes straight downfield. Intercepted. Inbounds, no. Caught it off the field of play. The interception was taken by Stefan Pace, intended for Bates, but Pace picked it off just off the field of play. It's really a rotating zone where the cornerback is playing short, the safety's playing deep, the safety comes over, almost makes an interception, he drops the ball. Terry McDaniels, who had a magnificent game up at the farm, had a great game against Washington State. Gene Prouget, Don Gibson, his brother plays offensive center. Barber, Ross, Tulliao, Greg Hartsiker in the secondary. We have Holmes, Oliver, Hopkins, and Pace. Third down and 14. We told you Arizona left to run it. Malahula's been back throwing the ball ever since. Has some time. Chase, in a roll. He can move. They give ground. The pass is incomplete. Intended upfield for Vaughn. Knocked away by Pace. This is great coverage here. Receivers coming across the field. Malaulu is looking for him. Pace has to behind the receiver. Watch him. He goes right in front. That's Vaughn, and that's Pace right on. That's 909. That's a great defensive play by the safety for USC. Scott Lockwood stands back at the Trojan 28. The up man at the 35 will be Hannah. Back to punt is uh, Josh Miller standing at the Arizona 12. 7 0. Trojans lead first period. Big rush. Ooh, just didn't get it away, and it's a low one. Coming to Hannah. Make it Conway at the 40, steps up to the 47. SC will have it first and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Good field position. They lead 7-0. 30 yards on the kick, four on the return. We'll be back after this. USC football is brought to you by your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. And by Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong. Brad Banda, number 82, is in at a tight end spot for the Trojans. Wellman out of the huddle, wide to the right side. SC leads 7-0. Tailback is Nazio Royster. Up front, Spears at the fullback spot. Marinovich, the quarterback. Gibson is in at center, and Jackson in motion. The handoff to the tailback. Royster slips upfield to the 49. Gain of two, second and eight. Darren Case was there to bring him down. One of four captains for Dick Toomey. Case on defense, along with Lewis on defense and Zeno Alexander. And offensively for Arizona, their other game captain is Rick Warren, offensive guard. Spears goes out. Wallace comes in, leading the Trojans with a solo back, and that'd be Royster behind the line. Wellman's the slot back on the right side. And Wallace is flanked wide to the right. Play action, Marinovich throws on the run. High toss, Jackson pulls it down as he takes it upfield and down to the Arizona 43-yard line. You know, play action does everything, and the Trojans will come at you with play action because Royster is so dangerous. The, you can see the Wildcats takes the fake. 88 is just wide open. He was open early. Shows you his good hands there. He gets the ball, and the one thing he does right here, he goes upfield. He's not playing fancy football. He goes upfield. Jackson had six catches coming into this game, Mike, and all of a sudden he's got half that many in this ball game in the first half, first period already. Three catches, 43 yards. He, of course, is uh, starting at the tight end spot. Mike Griffin out. Season-ending injury. Marinovich rolling. Wants to go deep for Wellman. Looking for him. He has it, but he's off the field to play. Boy, some tough defensive coverage. Lewis was there. Back there also was Todd Burton defensively. 
Now, we talked about that matchup today. This is Todd here. He's looking for his deep man. That's Wellman. Daryl Lewis, who's the best corner in the country, is one-on-one -on -one with him. Todd has to lay it, up, lay it up perfectly. He's a little short, which gives Wellman a chance to get back. That could have been on purpose. And Wellman just couldn't hold on to it. Daryl Lewis is right. And now we get a closer shot here. Look at this. That's acrobatic athletes right there. Look at that. Oh, he just doesn't hold on. They're both about the same size. See Gary Wellman with seven catches and two touchdowns, averaging almost 28 yards a grab. Second and 10 at the Wildcat 43. Jackson in motion. Marinovic gives the ball to Lockwood. Gets back in the middle, gets to the 40. He's shy of the first down by a considerable amount. Going to be third down in about seven. Again, Case there at the bottom of the pile. And Rob Waldrop. Checking in now, number 46 coming in is Mike Parker at a linebacker spot. And going out, number 44 is Marcel Wade, Arizona. At the 40 yard line, third down and a long seven. Backs are split. Wellman slotted left. Marinovich to throw. Has some time. Pass complete over the middle. Royster to the 30 yard line. And down he goes, tripped up by Parker. It'll be a first down. You know, the Trojans have so many weapons, and they use all of them. Here you can see Todd looking. Halfback is coming across the middle. That's Royster. He takes the hit, but he gets a first down. He hits the, hard, hits the ground pretty hard. He gets up slowly, but first down Trojans. Bernovich has completed four out of five for 54 yards, and he's advancing very steadily up the ladder of great Trojan quarterbacks in completions and yardage and what have you, and he's very, very close to Jimmy Jones. In fact, probably would go by Jimmy with a good afternoon here this afternoon. Ball at the 30, first and 10. Jackson in motion, reverse, in trouble. Oh, they get a block. Travis had a flag. And that's going to be a clipping call on Banna. And that play, A, took too long to develop, and B, the reverse went behind the line much too deep to be successful. And C, you wonder why you do this, because you're running the ball right down the field, and now you're using trickery, and that's a dangerous toss there. That really is. And when you've got him that deep, and you see uh, Brad Banner with the clip, good call. Not the play, but the flag by the officials. You know, the Trojans are just... You know, Tom, the Trojans are moving the ball down the field. Now why stop yourself and do something like that? That's a good question. I have no answer to that. Hanna goes out, coming into the game now. Number one is Wallace. Let's see who else is coming in with them. Wellman is in. Banta goes out. They've got Spears in. Mark the ball back at the Arizona 45-yard line. Going to be first and 25. Wellman right. Give to Royster. He was back inside. Got hit. Was down at about the 43-yard line. Body's flying around in there pretty good. The guy who came up and forced him inside and got a piece of him first was Lewis. Nice play by Lewis. Yes, and he had, he had outside coverage. He saw a red run play, so he's in the first force, man, and he hit Royster pretty well. Yes, once he knew, and he almost immediately realized, they're not going to throw this baby. They're running it. He came right back in and was every bit as good as his press credentials would have you believe. He's a very talented back. Good, good football player. Wellman in the slot left. Backs a split. Second and 23. Marinovic rolling away from pressure. Throws it. Screen pass. Royster trying to make something happen. Unable to get it done as he dropped close to the 46-yard line. That's going to be a loss of three, and it'll be third and 26. You know, what they want to do now, the Trojans expect great pressure. They do get it. They throw it to Royster, but also there are people out in the flank who's ready to make the play. And Hopkins, number 82, comes up and he puts the clincher on Royster. So the Trojans, with the first down at the Arizona 30, have steadily in three plays gone backwards. And now they're back at the Arizona 46-yard line. So they've lost 16 yards, and it's third and 26. Shotgun. Marinovic. That's a wobbler. Incomplete. In 
intended downfield for Scott, who couldn't get away from Roland, who had real good position on him and just wouldn't let him get toward the ball. Well, big uh, contingent of Arizona fans over for the game, and they set up a rousing round of applause for the defense, who looked to be in trouble. Suddenly, uh, thanks to the Trojans and some good defense by the Wildcats, find SC now in a putting situation. Lewis is back at about the 10. You see Ronnie Dale averaging almost 42 yards a kick. And there's Lewis. Dale hits a high one. Turns it over nicely. It'll bounce inside the five, skips into the end zone. The ball will come out to the 20. Arizona will have it first and 10 at their 20. 41-yard kick. 46-yard kick. No return. 7-0 Trojans lead. We'll be back right after this. To nothing over Arizona, and the ball is at the Wildcat 20 yard line where it's first and 10. Trojans had a, a very nice second drive of the afternoon going when they had a first down at the Wildcat 30 and then promptly proceeded to find themselves in a hole, ending up with a fourth down and 26 in a kicking situation. Malaulu. Malaulu is in at the quarterback, and George is back to pass, gets a bit of a rush, throws it out incomplete into and out of the hands of Greathouse. Flag down on the play. But of course, Mike, we'd be the last to know, but Malahulu has thrown more passes today than Arizona likes to throw in any one game. Inadvertent flag, huh? What the Wildcats are trying to do is figure out what the Trojan weaknesses is or are. But the problem here, Tom, is they don't have confidence in their basic running game. They came here running the ball. They're second in, in the conference in running. They come to the Trojans here in the Coliseum, and now they're afraid to run, and that's not very good football. Reggie McGill checks in. Number eight going out of the game is Terry Vaughn, number nine for Arizona. Malaulu is in at quarterback. They come up in an eye formation. They send Jan wide to the right. Greathouse in motion. Hand off, tailback, straight up the middle. Hampton gets it out to the 28-yard line. Ross and Gibson combined for the stop. This is what they do best. They give it to the big guy. This is Hampton here, and he's going to take on a linebacker. And boy, it takes around three Trojans to bring him down. That's what they do. And why get away from it? 222 pounds Hampton is, a junior. And he gets up ahead of steam, or even half, a, even half ahead of steam, and he can put a hurt on you. Malaulu rolling to throw, sets, fires at the flat, complete. Caught at the 32-yard line by Hampton again, buried there, but that'll be enough for a first down. First and 10 at the 32. Ross was the number one guy over there, help coming up from Hopkins, along with Gibson and Brian Tuliao. Tom, maybe they should, should, could continue to use Hampton because he's the only two successful plays they've had. They run him and they pass to him. Um, he's a big guy and makes a big target. Five first downs to one for the Trojans. SC leading seven to nothing. Now Greathouse goes out of the game and into the ball game comes McGill. Pitch is back, sweep left, turning the corner, McGill. Gets a couple out to the 34. Coming up to force him back inside was Oliver, number 43. Hartsacker is there. Julio. Mark it at the 34-yard line. It'll be second and eight. Now McGill goes out of the ball game. Some big people up front. Vince Smith, number 72, is 343 pounds. Finian Ganofo, number 61, is 332 pounds. That's the right side of the offensive line. Malaulu straight ahead. That's Greathouse. Takes it over the 40. Now they're going to mark him down at the 40. That'll be a gain of six. Third and two. Gene Fruget was there to make the stop. That's good blocking. You see Greathouse number three there. That was good blocking by the Wildcats front four, or I should say offensive line. They blew back, you know, Fruget and got the middle and let the fullback run, and they did. Hampton comes out and Stridnick comes in. Great House leads Arizona in rushing four touchdowns in the yardage figure. Stridnick is the fullback in the I formation. Third and two. 
They pitch it to Greathouse on the sweep. Turns the corner. Well done. Boy, Greathouse went right by. Linebacker and Gibson finally made the stop. First down at the 48, pickup of eight, first and ten. Here's Greathouse, number nine. That's uh, uh, Hampton, I should say, a uh, pace coming up to tackle. And even fullbacks can fake out three safeties this way. And three safeties are normally good tacklers, but the big guy made the move and got the first down. Here we get another look at it. Malulu had to take a hit, and that's always costly, but the big guy gets past a, a free safety and gets the first down for the Wildcats. At the 48-yard line, 7-0 Trojans lead. We've got two and a half to go, first period. Play action. Malulu to run, no, to throw, no. He goes down. Mark it at the Trojan 49, going to be a pickup of three, second and seven, and McDaniels comes up to make the stop. So far, the Trojans have not stopped the Wildcats yeah, on this drive. Malulu, whose left-hander is going to his, his right, which is tough for him. Now he sees nobody down there, and he takes off. But there's Daniels to make the tackle. Coming out of the game now for Arizona is McGill. Wide to the left side. Jan. High formation, second and seven. Malulu to throw. Sets deep, steps up, going to get away, going deep downfield, throws it over the head of his intended receiver, Jan. And Tom, Jan should be embarrassed. He gave up on the play, and that's one of the things they teach you in workouts. You never give up on your pass play, particularly when the quarterback's alive. And I say, there's Tommy. He's not very happy about that. But I'll tell you, there could have been embarrassing enough for everybody because the defender for us, he kind of gave up on it, too. Simultaneously, and that's just a bad play on both behalves. But I think Calvin Holmes slowed up because the, the uh, pass receiver, Jan, slowed up. Mamaulu is one of five for five yards. McGill is in the slot left. Seven. Give it to the fullback and Strindig takes it to the Trojan 46. It's going to be fourth down in about three yards to go. Hunting situation and Miller comes in. Wildcats should feel very good about that drive. They moved the ball. They didn't think they could do that against the, the Trojans defense and they should feel very good on the next drive. That was 34 yards worth of pretty good effort by Arizona. And now Miller to punt, and we've got Curtis Conway and Scott Lockwood as the deep bet for the Trojans. Minute 24 remaining, first period, SC up 7 nothing. Not much of a rush. The punt's a high hanger, fair catch signal for by Conway at the 12. And SC will have it there, first and 10 at the 12. 35 yards, no return. Some other games, and there have been some dandies played around the country, and some still going on. Show you some other scores. Virginia ranked number one. 49 to 14 over Wake Forest. Wake Forest thinks the Cavaliers are number one. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell you. 29-20. Notre Dame outlasted Miami. What a tough ball game that was. Fighting Irish winning at home. 31 to 3. It's a final. Nebraska beating Oklahoma State. No upset there. Everybody's beating the Cowboys. 44 to 17. Houston rolling over SMU. We'll give you more in a moment. First and 10. Ball at the Trojan 12-yard line. Marinovich to his fullback. Lockwood pops it up the middle. Puts it up to the 19-yard line. It'll be second down and about three. As Marcel Wade, along with Todd Burton, made the stop. That 3-4 front, front didn't have much of a chance. The Trojans were double tied in. They just blew the center of the line out. Here you see Lockwood picks the hole, gets a little hit there. But it's a good game for the offense. Wellman goes out, Lockwood goes out. The ball is at the Trojan 19-yard line. Second down at about three. Weister's the tailback. Spears is the up back or pull back in the I formation. Jackson, the H back, goes in motion. Second down, Weister. Coming outside at the 20, 25. He's got speed, 30. Caught and brought down by Bird, who ran him down at about the full 39-yard line. 20 yards on the pickup, first and 10 at the Trojan 39. Tom, a very simple play. You run an off tackle, gives the running back a chance to also jump outside if there's no hole there. And that's what he does is takes Todd Burton to run him down. Very easy yards when your linemen are blocking and he, the running back gets to see, get to see some area where he can go. The uh, young um, tight end, Brad Banta, was the man who put a pretty good block on the 
the right end, the right side of that Arizona line that let Maestra, uh, a Royster get outside. Spears and Lockwood in the backfield now. The pitch back to Lockwood. Coming to the short side. Hangs his way out very close to the 45. Burden making the stop. Well, this is the way the Trojans put that opening drive of 84 yards together. This is the way they put their second drive together before they went to page two. We've got seconds ticking away here. The first period coming to a close. SC leading seven to nothing. We'll be back with more after we pause for this message. Seven nothing Trojans lead. Special honor down in the field for SC's all time leading ground gainer and number three Heisman Trophy winner. Number 12 in your program. <laughs> number one in your heart. You got it. Charlie White. <laughs> I tell you, Mike, he uh, is in such great shape today that he could go out and show Royster and everybody else on that football team how to run with it. There he is. What a sweet. All right, rolling is Marinovich. Going to get hit. And down he goes for a loss back at the 37. Blowing through there. And making a very big play for Arizona was Wab Parker. Here we get a shot. We're rolling to our right. Todd's looking down. There gets Marcel Brown comes, gets penetration. Todd has no chance, and he gets tackled for a loss. That's Mike Parker, 6'3", 212. He made that tackle in some Pampa, Texas. So the Trojans go from a second down and four at the 45 to a third and 12 back at the 37. Wellman is wide to the left. Marinovich is in a shotgun formation. Chased. Gets some running room. Threw it too far for Wallace. Had him wide open and overthrew him. Wallace was open, but it was a tough read because, you know, Todd's running on this. Wallace is coming from all the way from the other side, and they just can't judge how fast he's going, so he leads them a little too far, and Wallace cannot make the catch. Hunting situation. Lewis is back as the safety for the Wildcats. And uh, Dale is in to kick it away for the Trojans. 7-0. Trojans lead. Oh, and Dale just gets turned upside down. And what a punt to Lewis back at the 10. Turns outside, finds some room, and out he goes at about the 17-yard line. But they'll bring that back. We're not talking running into the kicker. We're talking discombobulating him. I mean, they turned him upside down. That's Michael Bates. He's the guy who tried to block the punt. And you, they put him out there on the wide side of the line because he's the fastest on the team. He's going to fly right across Dale's face, but he's going to take Dale's body with it, too. Boy, that is a penalty. You could hurt a punter Ruffy doing that. the kicker. Defense, 15 yards, first down. Here's Dale. You're the punter. Let's see how they you. Oh, that would frighten you to death. You know, I remember years ago in Miami, Rich Leon, who was a Trojan punter, got turned around like that. They broke his leg, the Hurricanes then. It also ended his career, too. He was a great receiver from Santa Ana College, and he was punting like that. Going to mark it down to the uh, Arizona 48. These quarter notes are brought to you by Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong, 159 yards to 35. Lockwood with a 30-yard touchdown run. Marinovich, 5 of 7 for 51 yards, and is good as that 84-yard opening drive went by the Trojans on subsequent drives have really stumbled and been their own worst enemy. First down. Tailback. Royster picks his way to the 40-yard line. A nice gain of eight. It'll be second and two. What a dandy of a play in the middle of the line. Darren Chase is blitzing number 50. Mark Spears picks him up and, he, and really nailed him. Now you're, and now there's 50. Watch him go. He takes the fullback hit there. That gives Royster a chance to go downfield. Good blocking. Fullbacks are very important. And Darren Chase has to leave the game because he got a contusion on the on the thigh. There you see him. So Case comes out of the game. Uh, Maziel Royster has got 49 yards and seven carries. At the 40-yard line, second and long two. Again to the tailback. Royster diving over the right side. He is close to, but just shy of the first down at the 39. 
It'll be third and about a yard to go. Alexander was there along with Parker to make the stop. Close to the first down, but not nearly enough. Got a yard to go. Lockwood goes out. Let me show Larry Smith. He got a nice haircut there, Tom. It's all you know, homecoming. And yes. his friends coming from Arizona had to be at his best. You know, look his best. Wow. Royster got turned every way but loose, but I think they're going to give him enough for the first down, Mike. Might be a very favorable spot for the Trojans. And I tell you, the middle of that Arizona Wildcat defense, led by Parker, really fought their way in there and gave them a very bad time of it. This is very, Royce, very close. This is Royce's third game, and I can say this is the first time I see it. I've seen him do something wrong as a running back. He should have just plunged in there and taken a big hit, but what he did was try and dance and pick up a first down. You don't do that. F fourth, third, and one, you go in there and take on the whole crowd. You never know where they're going to spot it, and they never know when they're going to say, well, this was forward progress. You keep moving around in there, and they're liable to say... You're short. That's right. Fourth down and about six inches to go. Now the crowd wants Smith to go for it. Of course, it's homecoming. Why not? They lead seven to nothing. Of course, the crowd won't have to answer the press in the locker room after the game if things go bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, easy for you to say, right? That's right. So Lockwood comes in. Spears goes out. And from the looks of things, the ball just shy of the Arizona 38. It's going to be fourth down in inches. And SC's going for it. Double tied in, so they're believing their offensive line. Well, Lockwood gets the first down easily as he storms to the 35. When you go double tight end, that's saying, let's go smash face football, what you said last week, Tom. <laughs> and the Chargers did that, and they just blew out. Lockwood took the, uh, really attacked. He wasn't dancing here. He's just looking for a hole. They blow out. Look at this. That's running at his best. And Lockwood won't just stop at one yard. He tries to pick up five more. So out of the game goes Royster. Lockwood out of Boulder, Colorado, a junior. He's a young guy that's been asked to do double duty. When Ricky Irvins went down, he was playing the fullback spot as well as the tailback spot, available to go in either position. Hand off, there's Lockwood again. A couple this time to about the 32-yard line. It's going to be second and eight, making the stop Blonick. Big middle guard, checking in now, big number 65. Coming on the field, that's uh, Pumele. Coming out as... Johnson, Reggie Johnson, another fresh body going in is Parker. Tom number 96, Glonick is a transfer from Iowa. Couldn't play last year because they kicked him off the team. This year he's a stalwart in the middle of the line. He made a great play. Lockwood's got 54 yards on seven carries, including that 30-yard touchdown scamper. Marinovic, give on a delay to Lockwood. He gets to the 31. That play uh, needs some refining, Mike. Yeah, that play needs not to be called. Pumele was there to make the stop at the 31. It's going to be third and seven. Well, we're tough to please. A while ago, we wanted him to run that baby up the middle instead of the reverses. And Larry Smith is over there saying, I wonder what those two guys really want us to do here. What you want to do is give your back a chance to do something. Don't put him in a hole where he only has one place to go. That's my motto. All right, third down and seven at the 31-yard line. Marinovich to throw. Over the middle. Oh, my. Wide open. I think Lockwood has another touchdown if Brinovich just gets the ball up a foot. I think Lockwood's going to discuss it. He's walking towards Todd now. Here, Todd is moving. It's always your feet when that happens because you're not getting your body in position. Therefore, it's a bad throw. And Lockwood's saying, well, what happened? You always do better than that. All he had to do was, as you said, set his feet, and he's got an easy first down and maybe a TD. We're going to have a field goal try of 48 yards. Pat O'Hara will hold it, and Quinn Rodriguez will hit it. As long as it's 47, this would be an all-time for him, 48. Now he hits it. He's got the distance. His longest ever. Quinn Rodriguez, who's really having a magnificent season, with 10-41 remaining in the first half. The Trojans lead Arizona 10 to nothing. We'll be back with more right after this. 
That drive that the Trojans put together was kept alive by that roughing the kicker call, remember? Middle of the field, we've got Bates, number 20, waiting to run this one back. And that's Runnerstrom who will be kicking off. Trojans hope not to Bates, who could put Arizona right back in this ball game in a very big hurry. Michael Bates, out of Tucson. Boy, I tell you, this guy's a real spreader. The ball is in the air and going to the far side and bounces and goes out of bounds. Boy, it's almost skipped into the end zone. That's the second time that Runnerstrom has kicked it away from Bates and to no avail. Gonna bring it back and you'll have to kick it again. Here we go procedure by the kicking team. We kick out of bounds. Five yards, repeat kick. Mazio Royster, is that a little limp we see over there? Looks like an uh, ankle twist. Urban's is hurt with a bad ankle. Now Royster is uh, favoring his right one. I feel like that does. Someone said he's got a problem with one of his toes. So they'll take it back to the 30 now, and Runnerstrom will try again. Trojans may have had him headed off. At any rate, it's going to be Arizona's ball on their own 42-yard line. You know, Tom, there's nothing like speed, and when you give speed a chance to outrun you, they'll do it every time. Michael Bates get outside, and he starts flying. Oh, boy, like you said, the 12th man was at outside the, the chalk mark there, so he slipped trying to turn it up. And lucky for the Trojans. You know what uh, often happens when you bobble it? Everybody has a tendency to kind of hesitate for a second. And more often than not, the guy who picks it up can run with it. Malaulu flips it back to Greathouse, turning the corner, driven out of bounds across the way. At the Arizona 48-yard line, going to be a pickup of six. It'll be second and four. The Wildcats move the ball very well in their last possession. They come right back this play, fake the belly to the fullback, pitch it to the halfback, and they have their offense is hopping now. You know, I've been looking through the book, and I finally found the page I wanted. I don't know how many fans realize that the goal posts are a lot more narrow this year than they were last. They've taken them from 23 feet 4 inches to 18 feet 6 inches. They're skinny. So that 48-yarder by... Rodriguez is really impressive. Straight ahead, and uh, Strydnick gets very little. Maybe a yard, close to the 50, but not enough for a first down. Brought down by Ross. Going to be third, and we'll call it three at the 49. You know, the best way to stop a running game is get a very aggressive linebacker who fills the hole. Hey, there's number 35, Scott Ross. He's been doing it all year. Good tackle. 6'2 and 235, a senior from El Toro. I don't think I've ever seen him, but he didn't have a smile on his face. Oh, maybe up in Seattle or back at South Bend. There's the toss. Alulu, and he gives it to Greathouse, and he's very close. I think he's got the first down at the Trojan 48. Now you see why the option offense is so tough to stop. They, they'll pitch it right, and they'll come back left, but all the time faking that fullback dive. Boy, the quarterback takes a hit there from Barber. Now you see Greathouse just makes the quick move. Or Strydnick makes a move and Pace can't stop him for the first down. Uh, going off the field is Greathouse uh, carrying the ball. Looks like he came up either with cramps or uh, his left leg is a problem. We hope it's nothing serious. First and ten at the Trojan 48. Malahulu. Play action. Back to throw. The left-hander turns it loose downfield. He's got a man. That's Bates. Bates is at the five. Touchdown, Arizona. 
And the Wildcats are right back in this one. Tom, we were saying the last possession, they moved the ball very well. Now, Malaulu's not known for his pass, but Bates is running a post pattern. He's wide open. He lays it out there. There it is. Even though it's a little late, it's tough for the Trojans to get it. And McCowan can't pull him down. I should say Hopkins, and Bates falls in for the touchdown. There were a lot of Cardinal jerseys back there, too, but Bates was behind all of them. And now, Costin for the extra point. It's good, and with time out of the field, Arizona's right back in it. 9.20 remaining here in this, the first half. Arizona, 7, USC, 10. We'll be right back. Very big play for the Wildcats. George Malaulu gets his first touchdown toss of the year, and Bates gets his first touchdown catch of the year. 48 yards, a lot of time, and a post pattern, and he's behind two Trojan defenders. Hopkins grabs him and spins him around, but Bates is a very strong runner and a very powerful guy, and he just spins and steps his way in the end zone. There's Michael Bates out of Tucson, Amphitheater High. <laughs> So it's 10 to 7. We've got 9.20 to go in this first half. And now Arizona will kick off. Costin set to kick it to the Trojans. Hanna and Conway, the two twin deep men. This is a, a ball that bounces right off the chest of a Trojan. But you see, the ball, I don't think, went 10 yards, did it? Doesn't have to. It hits the offensive team. It's live once that happens, and the 10-yard rule is, is not a fact. They marked it, Trojan ball. Now, Arizona says we've got it. The officials have indicated it was SC's ball. Now they're giving it to Arizona. Ball hit David Webb. And Arizona's going to have it first down at the Arizona 49. Their first indication. In fact, they indicated twice that SC had the ball. Here we get a look at it. It's going to be kicked now. Now, the question is, does it go 10 yards? But more importantly, when right at the SC ball player he hits him, that ball's live. Now, whoever recovers it has the ball. If SC recovers it, obviously it's theirs. And the wild the kicks get the team, ball. The kicker's recovered. White ball. Well, the officials have finally decided the kicking team recovered it. And so it'll be first and 10 Arizona at the Wildcat 49-yard line. 10 to 7, the Trojans lead. Gibson was there on defense. You know, Tom, normally you don't have a, a defensive end covering the screen there, but Gibson's right there on the pass, uh, a potential receiver, the back. He almost intercepts it. Into the game comes David Lockhart with a play from the bench. He's number one. McGill is the tailback, and Bates is a slot back on the left side. Second down and 10. Alaudo going to run it on the option, pitches it back, and driven out of bounds for a loss at the 48-yard line. Barber over there, McGill driven out of bounds. It'll be third and 11 at the Arizona 48. Interesting notion. The Trojans, when they play well, is when defense takes control of the game. Here, they just have an option here, and you'll see six or seven Trojans out there, and they're just going to hurt somebody. They're coming out there playing me. Harry McDaniels was the first guy in there that forced Malaulu to do something with it besides carry it. So I didn't think this is the best spot to be. Now wants the football. If I throw this away, he may leave me alone. <laughs> McDaniels did. High formation. Receiver set to the right side. Third and 11. Malaulu back to throw and has time. Passes complete to midfield. To the Trojan, 45. Short of the first down. Lovett was the man who caught it. It'll be fourth down. Pickup of seven. It'll be fourth and four at the Trojan 45. And coming on now is Miller to punt. Going back is Lockwood as Malaulu comes off the field. We haven't seen Beal yet. Miller standing at his own 40-yard line. Good rush. He hits a high pooch punt. Fair catch, says 
Lockwood. And it takes a Trojan bounce. Oh, no. Out of bounds at the one-foot line. 44 yards and no return. And the Trojans will start 99 yards away from the end zone. We'll be back. 10-7, SC Lee. And the silver bullet is the right beer now. Well, you couldn't hit a wedge shot any better than this. That punt by Miller looked as though it was headed for the end zone. Bounces and goes suddenly dead sideways away from Lockwood. And out of bounds. There's a fumble. Big pile up. Arizona says they've got a touchdown. That snap from center may be the problem. Come on, Dick! Well, it's listed as no gain on the play. Second and ten at the six-inch line. Tom, the way Marinovich fell, looks like he lost the uh, snap from the center and just fell straight down to protect the ball, and luckily for him. Well, if he did, that'd be about the seventh time in the last three games. Marinovich rolling, still in the end zone. Throws it downfield for Weldon, way too far. Third down and 10 at the six-inch line. Hammerschmidt back defending on Wellman. You know, Tom, what you look for quite often in the game is to see which team is losing their, their uh, confidence. And at one time, the Wildcats were out of this game. The Trojans brought them back. They score. Now they have the Trojans inside their five, and they feel pretty good. A late arrival on the field for the Trojans. 13 seconds remain to get this playoff. Alec Mahorn is in. Lockwood running very hard, takes it out to the seven, but that is not anything more than just first, uh, fourth down and punting it away. Alexander made the stop. Lewis is going back as the solo safety. And Arizona's really pinned the Trojans deep in SC territory with 7.09 to go in the half. Lewis is standing at the Trojan 45-yard line. Dale is back yard from the back line of the end zone. Pretty good rush. And he drives it out of there. And it's a beautiful punt. Drives Lewis to the 42, 45 midfield. Stumbles, dives down to the Trojan 35-yard line. Well, it was a great punt, but the coverage wasn't much. Barber finally tripped him up. A 53-yard kick, and the return was 24 yards. Arizona's in prime position. Ball is at the Trojan 35. Dick Toomey's got to be feeling pretty good about the way his team is playing today. At Arizona, 23, 14, and 3, but at Hawaii and other spots, 86 and 60 overall. Malaulu is the quarterback. Hands the ball to his fullback, who squirms to the 32-yard line, Strednick. Tuliao and Fruge make the stop. At the 31, a gain of four, second and six. You know, when the Wildcats play well, it's because the offense spurs them on. The Trojans play well when the defense spurs them on. So now the two irresistible force forces go against each other. Second down, six yards to go at the 31. Bates is in motion. Malaulu hands the ball off to McGill, and he is to the 30-yard line. <laughs> Might have gotten inside. No, just a yard. Third and five at the 30. Boy, there was some popping on that last play. The Trojan on defensive line got penetration. And the fullback took it in there and went full bust. Boy, that was a great, great hit in that play. Arizona with a third and five wants to take a timeout. Malaulu's coming over to talk with Dick Tomey. We've got 546 to go in the first half. Trojans have a slim three-point lead. We'll be back after this timeout. Coliseum in Los Angeles, homecoming for the University of Southern California. 
And Arizona trying to spoil all the celebrating. Trojans lead 10-7. Field goal, his longest, 48 yards by Quinn Rodriguez and a 30-yard touchdown run by Scott Lockwood. 48-yard pass. Malaulu to Bates. Third and five. Malaulu rolling, throws it out in the flat. Bates can't handle it. Bates had it and couldn't handle it. It's going to be fourth down. This is a play action. Malulu's looking for Bates, his most dangerous uh, possession man who can really run. He sees the pressure, forgets to catch the ball first, and he stops the offense. Well, we'll see about a try for a field goal. It'll be a 47-yard effort for Costin. 47-yarder. in the air and long enough wide to the left so the Trojans buried at their one yard line a 53 yard punt returned half that back again gave Arizona great field position but the defense stopped them cold and now SC will take over on their own 36 yard line there's Gary Gossett he's going to kiss a cost going to kick this he just, it looks like it's good at this moment as it crosses the goal post, it's just a little left. Boy, he's upset. Body, body, oh yeah, oh, he's just moving below. It's kind of like when I hit my wedge and you say, Mike, you blew it again. And so he's unable to connect on that 46, 47 yarder. The Trojans take over at their own 30. Turns, play action, rolling to his left, sets, goes downfield, he's got his man, threw it too far, had Wallace wide open, didn't get it to him. Wallace on that play, Tom, had Todd Burton one-on-one, drove him off the line of scrimmage, made the cut to the post, wide open to the Todd. He knew he, he overthrew that, kind of upset. Oh. Last week, Marinovich was picture perfect. Pac-10 player of the game, and of the week. He's 5 of 11. Alabama 9, Tennessee 6. Scott Ross being looked to by Dr. Deal. They're working on his wrist a little bit. Trust me on that. <laughs> Out of the shotgun, low snap. Marinovich right over the middle, complete. Royster slides his way up to about the 44-yard line, and that'll be good for a first and 10. Alexander came over to make the stop. Todd makes the read. They have two outside receivers are going bombs. The, the halfback goes over the middle. Royster is getting too nifty for his own good. Sometimes he should just take it up and take some people on. Mark it out to the 44. Royster checks out of the lineup. Six of 12, 65 yards. Seven. Give the Lockwood. Trying to find a place to run. Can't. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten at the 44. Down he went. Case makes the stop. You know, there's a lot of people slipping today, and as an indication, maybe the turf is kind of loose there, Tom. But you know what they say about slipping. After a while, after you slip once or twice, that's a mental thing. You should adjust. Roland comes out of the ballgame. Score just in that California beat UCLA 38-31. Shotgun. Marinovich over the middle. High toss but caught at the 49-yard line. Lockwood pulls it down. Wade made the hit. It's going to be a gain of five. It'll be third and five at the 49. Lockwood is not the tallest target in the world, and he really paid for that reaching reception. Just gave you that final, 38-31. Cal Bears, SC plays them here in a couple of uh, couple of weeks. 18-year streak comes to an end up at Strawberry Canyon. Boy, will they have a time up there. Pitch back, Lockwood, midfield. Excuse me, Royster gets only to the 48. And so it's going to be fourth down, and the Trojans will send in the kicking unit. Fourth and about two. So SC unable to move the ball. The Wildcat 
48-yard line. Dropping back is Lewis. Dale will be in to punt. Had a 53-yarder a moment ago. Stands back at his own 37. Lewis looking into the sunshine at the 10-yard line at the other end of the Coliseum. This one is a low punt coming down, bouncing. Lewis takes it over the shoulder and goes down at the 10-yard line, maybe the 11. 37 yards and no return. We've got three minutes remaining here in this, the first half. It's burn or be burned when Calgary comes to town and the Flames are pretty steamed over their playoff loss to the Kings. Don't miss this hot night of hockey action. The Kings and the Calgary Flames, Tuesday night at 7.30, right here on Prime Ticket. Well, I would imagine uh, this homecoming crowd, predominantly pulling for the Trojans, would uh, say it's time for the defense to bottle up this Arizona attack, Mike, and give SC the ball back uh, in the closing moments of this first half. Washington buried Stanford, 52 to 16. Straight ahead, the fullback gets it up to about the 15-yard line. McGill. Second and six. Iowa with a big win over Michigan, 24-23. I don't know who's coming to the Rose Bowl from the Big Ten. I don't think they know. Could be Illinois, could be Iowa. Georgia Tech and North Carolina, 13 all. It's a tough year across the nation. A lot of evenly matched teams. Second down and about six at the Arizona 15-yard line. Trojans lead 10-7. Malaulu pitches it back. Outside, but not very far, is Great House to about the 17-yard line. It gets two, and that'll make it third and fourth to 17. Tulia brought him down. Real simple football here is just head against head. Wildcats are going at the Georgia's defense and moving the ball fairly well. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Jan checks in. Kyle Jan for Arizona. Coming out of the game is Lovett. Tailback is McGill. Malaulu. Rolling to throw. Gets away. Throws it up. Field intercepted. Into the end zone. Holmes for the touchdown. 24 yards. Flag down. Hold everything. Flag down. Hold everything at the 18-yard line. Be against the uh, Arizona Wildcats. There we go, motion. Offense. Touchdown. So Holmes will have the touchdown on the interception. And for Holmes, it's his first and his first touchdown. All year, the defense has been asking. They've been asking defense to do the impossible, and they, they do it again here against the Wildcats. Malaulu is running out. He sees his, foot, his fullback, Hampton, there, and he pitches it kind of underhand or tosses it. Fullback did catch it. There was Calvin Holmes. He picks it off and he walks in. But I tell you, that toss by Malaulu was the worst looking pass he's thrown. It was what you might call a um, an option toss. Catch either end of that. We know he's there. Right off his fullback's hand. You're right there, Tom. You know he's ambidextrous, so he can go right or left. This time he went left. And he just tossed it out like a toss play. It was kind of tough for the fullback to uh, make the catch. 16 to 7, the Trojans lead. Rodriguez out of a hold by O'Hara. Brad put it up in the air, but O'Hara pulled it down. 17 to 7, with a minute 32 remaining here in this first half. So Holmes gets his first interception and his first touchdown. Well, how quickly the fortunes of war and football can change, huh? Watch it again, and really, Malaulu wishes he'd never made this play. That's right. He's competitive, though, and that's why he tosses it there. Hampton just can't get that ball that's moving kind of awkwardly in the air. Holmes is there. He has an easy time with it, and he scores. So, momentum swings back to the Trojans. That is the fourth interception thrown by Malaulu this year, and earlier in this period, he got his first touchdown toss. Trojans will benefit also by having a five-yard walk-off for illegal motion against Arizona, so that'll be their 
at the 40-yard line. Calvin Holmes came to the university as a tailback. Well, cornerbacks get uh, running into the end zone. There's Michael Bates. You know, Tom, when he ran in the end zone, he looked like a tailback, didn't he? <laughs> Had that nice move about him. You say so, because <laughs> I just know what they look like from 200 yards away. <laughs> Runners from the kickoff. Lovett is wide to the far side. Bates is in the middle. Kickoff is high, end over end, and Bates in the end zone. Boy, he who hesitates gets it out at the 20 with the first. <laughs> Particularly when Terry Vaughn says, don't do it, don't do it. Alaulu will be back on the field. Ronnie Veal has number 10. Hasn't gotten a chance to play yet. He stands there. Alaulu has been in there the entire game, and that is really a big departure for Coach Dick Toomey. He changes quarterbacks almost every other down or so it seems he's done so. But Veal remains on the sideline. Minute 32 to go in this first half. away. He goes down at about the 28-yard line. Barber brings him down. He's a good runner. He really frightens you when he gets outside the pursuit because McGinnis, number 55, had a shot at him. You'll see he just play action fakes there. Then he feels 55 chasing him, and McGinnis can fly. And McUlu Mike, uh, Mala Ulu makes it look very simple, easy for me to say, and he goes right down the field, picks up some yards. All right, mark it at the 28-yard line, second and two. Toffelmeyer, the center, was shaken up. High formation. Minute remaining in the half. The tailback, he hurdles a couple of guys, and McGill takes it out to the 44 for a big first down. 16-yard pickup. Oliver makes the stop, and Arizona in the hurry-up offense. Clock shows 56 seconds. Ball out at the 43, first and 10. And now the officials are going to stop the clock. With 55 seconds remaining. 104, please. He's going back to the timer right now, Tom. Well, apparently the clock... Time remaining is 104. 104. Apparently they uh, had to move the chains and the clock just kept on rolling. And, of course, they moved the chains and then the clock goes. So a minute four remaining. And now the clock ticks away and Malahulu is back to pass. Steps up and throws it as batted away at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Barber was there to bat it away. One of the Wildcats is down at the line of scrimmage. Looks like Vincent Smith, their big tackle. Big, he weighs 343 pounds. <laughs> he doesn't miss a team meal, I promise you. And he's only a sophomore. I do hope he's not throwing. <laughs> Sherman Plunkett, I think you have a distant relative here. Boy, is he big, huh? Can you imagine what it feels like to be 243 pounds? What does it feel like to run into him? Or have him run into you? Oh. It'll hope. be second down and 10 at the 43. I hope he's a nice guy. <laughs> 56 seconds remain in the half. Gill in motion. Malahulu hands off to the second back, and that is Hampton, and he spun around and dropped at the 45. Rouget hit him. Going to be third down and eight. Clock shows 45 seconds, and Arizona has stopped the clock. Arizona has one timeout left. And Malahulu comes over to talk with uh, head coach Dick Tomey. Alaulu is a sophomore out of Carson. Iowa State beat Oklahoma 33-31 in the Big Eight, and that was down at Norman. 
Florida just buried Akron. What a mismatch. 59 oh. to nothing. Huh? Mississippi over Arkansas State, 42 to 13. Texas beats Arkansas, 49-17. Beat up on them. They're leaving the conference. Minnesota beat Indiana, 12-0. What a wonderful country. Huh? Clemson <laughs> over North Carolina State, 24-17. Baylor and Texas A&M in a 20-all tie. I thought Indiana was really a Rose Bowl possible. Penn yes. State buries Boston College 40-21. Louisville, Howard Schnellenberger's ball club beat Paul Hackett 27-20. Larry Smith, his team up 17-7. On the far sidelines, George Valaulu. At his own 45-yard line with a third and eight, he's back to throw it. Chase gets away. Chase some more. Throws complete. McGill sidelines out of bounds. First down at the Trojan 46. Nice pickup. Well thrown. He's a left-hander, Malahulu, and rolling to his right. Still throws the ball well. You know, Tom, the Trojans are playing. Only have a three-man rush, so they're playing like a prevent. And Malahulu then has a lot of time to circle the field and pick out his man that time he got McGill and that was a good gain and he's getting more dangerous as the clock ticks you could have gone all ball game without telling me that four <laughs> out of 12 for Malahulu 69 yards let me say prove it again to you prove it. Touchdown. <laughs> toss to Bates first and 10 37 seconds remain in the half Malahulu back to throw has time sets chase rolling away he's got five the Trojan 32 yard line run down by Fruget. 14 yards and a first and 10. He's Clock shows 27 seconds and now the market ready for play. He throws it in the ground to stop the clock. I'm kind of confused. I'm not too sure what he want to do on that play. But did he really want to throw it down? Boy, that was obvious. He just, let's stop the clock. Well, this brings up an interesting point. I know the pros do that. It automatically stops the clock. But it's been my impression that you have to throw the ball at a receiver or somebody that's eligible to catch it. He did. I think his halfback was laying flat on his, on his back, and he threw it right down there. Boy, that's unbelievable. If he were back, say, five or six yards and threw it to the sideline and nobody was there, it would have been intentional grounding. And now what? 23 seconds remain, and now they've taken their last time out. So the Wildcats use their last time out, 23 seconds remaining in this first half. Trojans lead 17 to 7 and the Wildcats trying to turn something into something here. USC continues its Rose Bowl quest in Tempe. They'll tangle with the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Another critical test for Larry Smith's crew. See if they can pass it. USC and Arizona State Sunday night at 1030 just after press box right here. Prime ticket. <laughs> So, I might remind you that our Pac-10 Prime Ticket Network Game of the Week is Arizona State at Oregon. It'll be coming up later tonight. Trojan band member. Well, that's we're talking serious here. Right? Yes. Besides being dressed in a band uniform, he has SC in his glasses. Boy, I think, uh, I think he's SC in and out. Ball at the 32. Trojans are in Tempe next week. 23 seconds remain. No timeouts for Arizona. First down. I beg your pardon. Second down. Loose football. No. Third and about 18. 
at the 40. Trojans are teeing off. They know that Malaulu wants to pass. That's Kirk Barber. He gets penetration. He gets help with, with a couple of Trojans, and then time's running out. So Malaulu throws it on the turf to stop the clock with three seconds. You know, they have a choice. They either try a long field goal or throw a Hail Mary up there, either one. Ball is at the 40-yard line. There's Don Gibson, who has survived a severe knee and an ankle. Put pins in it, if you will. And he's back to play this year and leads this Trojan defensive unit. Aside from overcoming a lot of physical problems, this is a very personable young man. And if you'll stay with us at halftime, you'll enjoy meeting him as Randy Hall, reporter for Prime Network, will do an in-depth report with this young man, Don Gibson. And a nice halftime feature for you. Fourth down, Malaulu back to throw. Sack steps up, puts it in the air, a mile downfield. It is intercepted. No, batted away. Picked off the turf by Hopkins. But that brings us to the end of the first half. And so the Trojans lead 17 to 7 here at halftime. A wild emotional ball game. We'll be back after we pause for this message. 17 to 7. Marinovich not having the kind of a day that he had a week ago. But in this uh, day and age of college football, not easy to be up at the top of your game week in and week out. A lot of distractions, of course. Pac-10 player of the week. This week, 7 of 13, 71 yards. And George uh, Malahulu, who really doesn't come into this game as a passing quarterback, he had thrown the ball 51 times, completing 22 of them, three interceptions, no touchdowns. Well, he's got a touchdown. He also has his fourth interception. And strangely enough, Mike Garrett, I thought we'd see Beal on almost every other play. He hasn't been in the ball game yet. And one of the things they're doing in offense is Malahulu does not does not have to run the ball as much. Therefore, he's fresh, and therefore you can keep him in the game. All right, Brunnerstrom will be kicking off, and you saw Bates there a moment ago. He's the dangerous return man. 17-7, SC leads, and we're about to get the second half underway. Arizona State and Oregon will be coming up a bit later. And, of course, this game coming to you live from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Evening coming on us, 5.30. Shadows are lengthening a bit. The field is now completely in shadows. There's Bates. He's all set to go. Runnerstrom advances on the ball. High end over end, not all that deep. Bates takes it at the 10. 20. Spun around and pulled down at about the 24-yard line. Downfield very quickly. Looked like Willie McGinnis was the man who was there first. Arizona, first and 10, and the Cats will have it. Injured player down in the field at about the, uh, call it the 25. Glasses to see. That's Chesley, 752. Yes. Dr. Summel's out there along with uh, Jack Ward. Medical staff, Byron's out. Tom, if he's hurt, Dr. Simmel's there. He'll take care of him. Yep. He's, he's been an institution SC a long time. That was 52 Chesley. Very good one football of player. Several members of the Chesley family that have come from back east to play at the university. Boy, that, that family's a story. Out of Indian Head, Maryland, I think of all the boys and all the girls in that family, everyone gets a college education and a degree. That's terrific. An amazing family. All right, new quarterback, and Veal is in now for Arizona. So we see Ronnie Veal for the first time. He hands off to his tailback, who finds the Trojan line waiting for him. McGill is just buried almost in his tracks. It'll be second and 10 at the 25. Ross and Tulio were there to make the stop. Scott Ross uh, kind of banged up a little bit, but he's back in there. Fernandina Beach, Fernandina Beach, Florida. 5'10", senior. One touchdown, one interception, 19 of 31. Quarterbacks in Arizona really don't throw it much. Love to run it. They've thrown it more today than you would ordinarily see him do. Keeps it on the option, pitching back, trying to turn the corner, great house. There's it, Miguel. 
It's McGill. Trojan defense. Look at that. There's got to be eight of the 11 Cardinal jerseys over there around McGill, led by Barber. What happens when you put Ville in, you know they're going to run, and the Trojan defense are responding accordingly, and now they have around six or seven guys, as you mentioned, Tom, and they have inside out on, on the ball carry, and they make an easy play. So it is third down at about eight. Heard Barber talking about stories. He was player of the year coming out of high school, Paducah, Kentucky. And boy, talk about quick as a can. This is some outside linebackers. High formation, third and eight. Beal, play action to throw. Rolling, looking, he'll run it. Up to the 30. 35, 36 yard line, and he will have a first down. Gibson makes the stop. It's obvious that uh, Tommy thinks that they can move the ball by just running, just give a little feint of a pass, and Ville, who's a better runner than Malaulu, sees the opening, and he doesn't even wait a second. He just turns it up and picks up the first down. Takes a good hit, but he gets the first down. Ronnie Ville, senior. Last year in that Trojan 23-3 win, he was 6-16, six 16, 16 yards, intercepted once. Keeps it on the action, pitches it back, turning the corner, love it. At the midfield stripe and out of bounds, and inside the Trojan 40, caught by Holmes. Boy, I'll tell you, when you run that option and run it to perfection, you've got yourself a, a lot of trouble for the deep. Boy, I'm, when they said Bill starts the second half, that meant put your chin straps on, we're running the ball. He tosses out to love it. He makes it a foot race with Holmes, and they think that Holmes is, has a good inside out and can run, and he pulls him down after a big game for the, that was a 26-yard run by Lovett. Mark the ball at the Trojan 38, Arizona starting the third period with a very nice drive. Ronnie Veal, the quarterback, engineering it. Long count. Takes the snap, gives it to the second man. That's Lovett. Stop him at the line of scrimmage. Tulio is there to make the stop. Play. The Trojans went to their conventional 3-4 uh, defense, playing strictly run. Fourth on the team with 35 tackles this year, Brian Tuliao is a senior from Long Beach Poly High School. Now we've got McGill coming out. Coming out also is Jan. Into the ball game is Lockhart, wide to the left, and Vaughn is flanked to the right side. Second and ten. Arizona. In motion is Lovett. Leo throws it out in the flat. Lovett's got it. And the Trojans have him at the 39-yard line. Quick reaction. Ross was over there very, very quickly. Holmes was there almost as quickly. Cornerback on coverage. And it's going to be third down and call it, well, maybe 11 yards now at the 39. You know, if you ever hear about the, the concept of a long handoff, that simply was it. Threw the ball right down the line of scrimmage, get to your running back, and let him go one-on-one -on -one with the defense. That time the Trojan stopped him. Lockhart is out. Back in is McGill. He is flanked to the right side. Vaughn way to the right. Field in the eye formation. Third and 11 at the Trojan 39. Play action. Rolling out, looking downfield. Veal throws it. Incomplete. Tried to get it at the sidelines. His intended receiver was uh, McGill. Good coverage by Calvin Holmes over there. Play action play. He gets outside. He's very dangerous. Holmes not too sure what he's going to do. He's on McGill there. Throws the ball a little far out. McGill can't make the reception. Good defense. There you get a shot at 21. He made the good play. That was an interesting camera angle. Showed Willie McGinnis, too, playing both the run and the pass, trying to keep his man covered and trying to come up to help out. All right. Josh Miller to take it away. His longest is 44, and he's averaging 36. Lockwood stands at the Trojan 10. High snap. The ball is away. Lockwood sails, uh, watches it bounce going to be down inside the five at the one. Well, they've been there before. 38 yards and no return. SC leading 17 to 7. Takes over at its own two-yard line. We'll be back. Third period right after this. Trojans have the ball on their own one-yard line. Talk about deja vu. Butch Henry, the 
SID for the University of Arizona popped in to tell us our great house has a hamstring. He went off limping, left leg. Chances are he won't be back. Smith and Toffelmeyer, two big guys up front in the offensive line, have some sprained ankles, but they probably will be back in. Larry Smith. Let's talk about coaching, and in the conference, 26 games, Smith's record, 23-2-1, Robinson, 22-3-1, Jones, 24-2, and, and McKay, 25-1. and one. Larry Smith has not lost a conference game here at the Coliseum. Boy, I tell you, Lockwood straight ahead may have gotten a yard or two. Talk about nowhere to go. And big number 92 in there, Rob Waldrop, 6'1", 256-pound freshman. Made the stop. Second down, put it out at about the uh, two-and-a-half, caught up the three-yard line and make it a long eight. You know, Tom, all the choices want to do is just grind this out, get control of the line of scrimmage, and the best way to do that is run straight at the defense. All right, Travis Hannes flanked wide to the right side. I formation in motion, Yanni Jackson. Hand off to the tailback. Weister has no place to go. They're going to hold it around in the grass down there. You know, Royster had success very quickly in his first two games. Now he's in the bad habit of Ricky Irvin's, and now he's just picking his way instead of blasting in there, making things happen. You certainly don't do that inside your own five yard. Pick your way. The last 13 rushing plays the Trojans have laid on Arizona have produced only 20 yards. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis Manishian keeping statistics for us. Third down coming up and big. SC is two of eight in third down plays. The ball is out at about the four yard line. It's third and seven. Wide receivers to the right. Marinovich rolling to his right. Sets, looks, going long downfield. No. Intercepted by Lewis, batted away by Wellman. Though I don't know from this angle whether Lewis would have been on the field to play, but he had more of the ball than anybody. Yes, Here's he another look at it. He would have caught it, Tom. And this is the same play they threw last week against Stanford. Good, good scouting on the Wildcats, Wildcats behalf. And Wellman, but for Wellman blocking the ball, that would have been an interception. Well, that same Mr. Lewis stands near midfield now, and Ron Dale will be in to punt it away. Dale's kicked the ball well today. He had a 53-yarder, and this guy, Lewis, ran it right back down the Trojans' throat. So here's Ronnie. 45 yards per punt. Back line of the end zone. They come with a pretty good rush. He hits a high hanger. Lewis backs up. 49-yard line. 45, 40, look out. 20. He is going to be dropped at the 6-yard line. What a return. About 43 yards. Barber made the stop. Well, I'll tell you, that's going to be a topic of conversation for Coach Smith next week. His special teams, in which he takes great pride. This does not make him very, very happy. Daryl Lewis is always dangerous. He finds that hole and just shows you he picks it up. Now, his only question is, can he get around Dale and Stefan Pace? And he does, but he gets hit from behind. He still gets the ball in good field position. All right. In motion is McGill. The handoff to the fullback, and he is wrapped up at the five-yard line. Love it. Run down by Hopkins. Great play by Hopkins. He comes inside out. He gets the running back. If he doesn't do that, Tom, it's touchdown Wildcats. Good play, number two. Here we get a shot. He has to in for. He's forcing outside in. He gets the running. Oh, great play. Second and goal of the Trojan five. Webb checks in. Veal pitching, trying to turn the corner and into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. McGill. Five yard run. And the Wildcats, thanks to a great punt return by Lewis, are right back in it. You know, told me in the second half decided, I'm going to play tough football. They bring in Veal. They run this option after a good punt return. And there McGill gets outside. He shows power. Holmes cannot pull him down, and he scores. That's McGill's second touchdown of the year, but the first rushing. Extra point. Down, up, good. Time out on the field. And the score, USC, 17. And Arizona, 14. We'll be back right after this. There's the man, McGill, who has brought Arizona its second touchdown of the game. 
and this was a five-yard run. You can take another look at it. See Veal run that option? The pitch to McGill. Watch this little move he puts right there that freezes number 21, Holmes, and lets him slip around and get into the end zone. But all of that was set up by a 42-yard dazzler of a punt return by Lewis. There's McGill. Howdy. I'm on. All right. <laughs> All right, two plays, seven yards, and McGill with his first touchdown running this year, his second touchdown of the season. And now Arizona right back in the middle of this, as we expected they would be, Mike, at the intermission. Yes, they came back, and they're playing smash face football. Hey, there's no trickery here. We're going to come at the Trojans, and we're going to try to beat them where, where they think they're strong, and that's right in the, in the trenches. Hannah and Conway are the two deep men. Costin to kick it. It's another low one. It's bouncing down, taken by Conway at the 15. It runs into a lot of white jerseys at the 24-yard line. Let's see, we'll have it first and 10 at their 24. Tom, one of the reasons Worcester's not running very well today is that he's limping. That ankle he hurt last week, he's favoring it again. As you can see a wrap on it, there's Todd Marinovich running on the field with him. The question is, can they move the ball and, and just run the ball right down at the defense? Because that's what they need to do at this time. That's Royster. Ball is just nosed up to the SC 25. Hold everything. Keep on that clock, right? The officials are. Uh, We're going with this clock. James Van is not working. Official clock at the open end. He could have fooled me, but that's not anything new. I thought the clock was running, but. It, Total yards so far, last two quarters, look at that. Arizona's dominated, 127 yards. I think we told you about 13 rushing plays produced 20 yards for the Trojans. They've got to get their game put back together. Royster straight ahead, there's no, no place to go there. Glonick is there to make the stop, and Mike Garrett wins a little bit. You know, I'm looking at Royster, and, and now the Wildcats are controlling the line of scrimmage. Essie's not getting off the ball. I would think that you go Lockwood and just start playing punch. Let's go at each other and just play hard football because Royster is not running very effectively right now. Larry Smith in conference with his assistants upstairs, talking to them, shaking his head as if to say, uh, we're not getting it done out there. We're going to have to do something. Wellman wide to the right. Maybe he's the answer. Yanni Jackson is the H-back on the left side. Goes back in motion. Second down. Marinovich back to pass. Looking over the middle. Going to be intercepted. Picked out by Lewis at the 40 and dropped at the Trojan 37-yard line. Under threw it, intended for Wellman. Under threw the pass. Banta had to make the tackle. And Lewis has put the Wildcats right back into this game again. Quite often, all you need to do is just play your game and don't make mistakes. Mistakes beat you. Todd here, this is Wellman. He's floating over. If you're going to hit him, hit him early. He does not. And then when he tosses it up, it's like a dead duck. It just floats into the air, ready to be picked off. And that's what Daryl Lewis does. He picks it off, and he's going to run it right back. Here you're going to look at Todd. Obviously, he doesn't have all his motion. He's not stepping forward, getting the, the velocity on the ball. So Arizona right back at the Trojans now. They trail 17-14. Beal gives the ball on the option, going for out of the downfield. Incomplete. How close can it be? Lockhart did everything but hang on to the football. Holmes was there defensively. I tell you, this feels kind of like a riverboat gambler. Got you reeling. I'm going to hit you with a haymaker. Huh? You know, Calvin Holmes is covering Lockhart right there. And this guy can fly. He's on their relay team. He's a 10-3 guy. Holmes stayed right with him. Maybe the guy should have caught it. Veal is definitely putting the Trojans at a disadvantage. They don't know what he's going to do next. Second and 10 at the SC 38. Eight minutes remain, third period. Arizona fighting to take advantage of several big defensive plays. Lewis has really done them in, the Trojans, that is. Long count. Veal hands off to McGill. McGill in the middle of the line. Bad tackling by the Trojans who let him escape to the 31. Going to be third and three after a pickup of seven. Ross and Holmes make the stop. Tom, one thing very obvious, Wildcats are not afraid of the Trojans. They're taking it to them, and, and they're doing right here at the Coliseum, and this is homecoming day. So, you know, there's going to be a big check on who wants to play football. Certainly the Wildcats feel like they can play right now. Seven and a half remain, third period. Ball at the Trojan, 31. Third down and three. Quarterback is Ronnie Veal. Gives it to his tailback. Stop, 
short of the first down, I believe. McGill at the 29. Tulio. Tulio makes the stop. It's going to be fourth and about one at the 29. Here we go. Let's just say fullback or tailback blast play. They're going to test the Trojans interior line. Just gets short of the first down. They're not afraid. They're coming at you. But now Veal has called timeout for Arizona, and he comes over to talk with Dick Tomey, his coach. Seven minutes to go in the third period. Wildcats looking to go on top. 17-14 SC lead. But for how long? We'll be back. Ball is at the Trojan 29. 17-14, SC leads Arizona. But I repeat, for how long? Fourth and a yard to go. Bates is in, along with McGill. And Hampton. Veal is the quarterback. Veal, I think, has the first down. Boy, the Trojan defense nailed him. And that wishbone, he faked the handoff to Hampton, faked the pitch, kept it himself, but I think he's got the first down. You know, I don't know who you're watching, who you're favoring on the SC, the Wildcats. Boy, this is great football. You One-yard plunge, both teams going at each other. This is what it's like. So look at that. They're plunging to the middle. They fake to the fullback. Veal makes a decision. He can pick up the first down. He takes on three tacklers, and he gets the first down. First and 10 at the Trojan 28-yard line. Tripped up and dropped at about the 27. Hartsiker and Gibson. Second and nine at the Trojan 27-yard line. It was this point last week that Donnie 2 Gibson took control of the line of scrimmage, and this is what he did this time, too. He gets through. He gets Bill. If he doesn't, Bill picks up a big game. Hens comes into the ball game for the Trojans. Big number 97. Ross is in. Ross has got his right hand wrist down through uh, the fingers of the right hand, heavily taped and bandaged. Second down and nine. Veal straightens to throw, and it's going to be a penalty on Arizona. Both guard and a tackle on the right side just raised right up. It'll be a dead ball. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yards, repeat second down. Boy, he's got a microphone you could hear in Anaheim, doesn't he? I'm telling you, James Springer really is getting through to you with that mic. How could you miss that call? Oh, well, this is really intense intensity right here. Both teams are firing out. One guy makes a mistake because he's a little more too tense than the other guy. Ball is at the 31, second and 14. Stride dig is in. by the Trojans secondary as well. His feet slipping out from under him. That's a loss of 11. That'll make it third and 25. Here's the man of the moment right now, 92. He will get penetration on this play action. He will put pressure on Veal. And the only way you're going to stop Veal today is do that, and that's what he does. He slips on the soft turf in the Coliseum. Well, fans who've been with us all day got an in-depth look at Don Gibson away from the football field. Young man out of orange, his brother Craig, a freshman, playing center for the Trojans. Third down and 25. Veal gives it to his fullback, breaks one tackle. Strydnick breaks another as he gets inside the 35 to the 34. Tulio was there to make the stop. Gain of eight, it'll be fourth and 17. And I'm wondering now if they've got the ball in field goal range. To me. Well, they're sending Miller in, Mike. Trojans rush a couple of uh, guys in, including Lockwood as solo safety at the SC-10. Miller stands at midfield. He's playing field position now. He wants to kick it close again and keep Trojans in their own territory. 
much more fun in that ball than I do with my wedge. He hit it too good this round. Put that in the back line of the end zone. It's coming out to the 20. I've got to talk to him about that. Oh, Maybe I can start kicking it instead of chipping it. SC will take over on its own 20-yard line, still leading 17-14. I want to remind you for all your scores, highlights, interviews, and more, tune in to Press Box. Join Larry Burnett, Alan Massingale, and the rest of the Press Box team for sports news at its best. Sunday through Friday at 10, it's Press Box right here on Prime Ticket. And Alan Massingale and the rest of the Press Box team for sports news at its best. Sunday through Friday at 10, it's Press Box right here on Prime Ticket. Watch it. You'll like the show. So the Trojans uh, get away from the interception, and for the moment, SC taking over first and ten on the 20. Time for the Trojan offense to get back into this game, Mike. Good hole up the middle. Outside is Lockwood. At the 40. Cut back. What a run. Down to the Arizona 38-yard line, and Hammersmith brought him down. 42 yards. Lockwood with a big, big buster up the middle. You know, it's a very simple game. Let's make it simple, guys. Let's start blocking. Let's not try and play the uh, real clever game. It's just a man-on-man -man block. Running back runs through. Now, you give your ball carrier something to do. Let's show your speed now, Lockwood. And that's what he does. He knows he's pinned. He takes on the defender exactly. He can't run any better than that. But I'll tell you, Lockwood has proved to be a most valuable asset. Look at those statistics for today, including a 30-yard touchdown run. What a, what a good football player this young man is, playing both positions. Bangs now is the fullback down to the 36-yard line. That'll make it second and eight. Lockwood continues to hammer away, and this time Parton and Case are there to make the stop. You know, there's a good point to look at 41. It's not always the most gifted player is successful. It's a kid with the big heart. He comes out. He, he rings true. He plays hard. And look at his eyes. Boy, he sparkles. He's ready to play. Second generation Trojan. Lockwood, his father played with my broadcast partner Mike Garrett back in the mid 60s. Eons ago. Uh, it was just like yesterday. Hand off straight ahead. Spears diving to the 31. That'll be a pickup of five. It's going to be third and three. You know, the, the essence of a running game is big lineman. Harlow and Tucker. Will blow out on the right side. Control. Look at this. That's poetry to a running back. Even a big fullback who's not the quickest, he can gain yards. And Spears picks up a good game. Spears goes out. Lockwood is back in after just a brief moment on the sidelines. Wellman wide to the right. Wallace is uh, Wellman wide to the right. Marinovich to throw. Pass. Oh my. Marinovich just hasn't hit anybody. Wellman turned and Marinovich threw it behind him by about four yards. Brings up fourth down. They needed three, and now they find themselves with a fourth down at the Arizona 31-yard line. You know, sometimes you talk about the bird in the bush and the other thing in the hand. Whatever that is in the hand. Well, one in the hand is worth two in the bush. Thank you, Tom. The saying, Thank right? you, Tom. At any rate, Marinovich and Smith on the sidelines, and Smith with his arm around him. This field goal try by Rodriguez would be his all-time, all-time, 50 yards of successful. SC looking to up their advantage to six points. O'Hara puts it down. Rodriguez hits it. It's long enough. Wide to the right. Hooked it. So, Arizona takes over on its own 31-yard line. Two teams with big opportunities here in this third period. Arizona converting a beautiful punt return by Lewis and a five-yard run by McGill to get their second touchdown. They missed out on a big opportunity, and the Trojans, in turn, find their efforts go for naught. Turns the corner, tripped up by Hartsiker, but not before he gets to the 40. 
It'll be second and two after a gain of eight. The one thing the Wildcats felt they could not do against the Trojans front three and four linebackers was option. Second half, hey, we're going to run the option. You guys, you haven't convinced us we cannot run. Toomey must feel very good because that's what he wanted. He wants to run the ball. Savage is in the ball game for the Trojans, number 24. Beal, cuts back, runs it beautifully. He's into the secondary and down to the Trojan, 42. Ran right by Barber. 18 yards. something well it looks so simple just fake the dive let's get out and read the defense let's fake the toss now let me be an athlete and that's just what he does in barber barely trips him up here and stops him from scoring a touchdown sc's defense against the run has been superb right now veal is going through it like a sieve pitch it mcgill going outside chased by oliver runs him out of bounds but not before he gets to the 35 yard line and a flag across the way and it may be against Hopkins. It is Tommy hits Bill from McGill way in, in outside of bounds about five yards. Frustration made him do it and they just march off 15 more. Here we get a shot. That's McGill. He has good speed. And now you see the hit when, when he's out of bounds. Personal foul, defense, great right hit out of bounds. 15 yards, first down. Take it down to the 20. We've got a minute 38 to go in the third period. Tom, you didn't want a boring homecoming game, did you? Uh, no. <laughs> First and 10 at the 19-yard line. Arizona on the march. Bates. No game. Veal is a 5'10", 195-pound senior, pretty compact guy, and strong. you got to be strong to run that option, and uh, look at the arms on him. He's well put together, Mike. He's quite an athlete. Second and 10 of the Trojan, 19, high formation, Bates wide to the right. Option, here comes Veal. That is the fifth touchdown of the year rushing for Veal. Boy, does he run that option. You know, in, in Tucson, they kept questioning, why do you keep filling the lineup? Malu is so much more effective. And Toomey said, this guy makes it happen. Watch this. That's what he does here. Gets in the second half, moves the offense, and he makes it happen. He scores a touchdown. Drive for the extra point. Ought to be automatic. Snap. Down. It's up. Kick was good. 21-17 Arizona with 54 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Arizona has scored twice here in this third period to erase a 17-7 SC lead, and they're up by four. Let's take another look. This is just pure option football. Quarterback makes the read. Barber's in a bind, 98. He doesn't know who to take. Quarterback turns it up. He outruns you to the goal line. He's a good athlete. He's a good athlete. I must confess, I didn't think anybody could run that option against the Trojans, but boy, Beal makes you think he invented it. 67 yards in five plays, and Beal with a 19-yard run. So Beal has scored, McGill has scored, Lewis with an interception and a great punt return, and in point of fact, the Trojans may be fortunate that there haven't been three touchdowns scored against them in this period. So, we haven't had a kickoff that's gone very deep. They've all been hit low and bouncy, and we'll see what Costin does now. His team up for the first time in the ballgame. Another low line drive. Gonna go out of bounds. That'll be a delay of game. Well, 
I suppose all things have to come to an end. SC in 16 games against the Wildcats. The last man to beat the Trojans in a Wildcat uniform is the guy walking over there, Larry Smith. The legal procedure, kicking team, free kick out of bounds, five yards, repeat kick. Well, we've had about uh, five of those, I think. There's Dick Toomey walking the sidelines. When you look at both coaches, Larry Smith biting the inside of his mouth, Toomey just kind of cajoling, walking down, feeling he, he, you know, I have control of the game at this moment. Oh, but the teams have to play. Well, he Garth. really does have control, no question about it. His ball club is playing good football, and Veal is running. I tell you, they've really given the Trojans two different looks, haven't they? Malaulu throwing the ball in the first half, and now Beal comes out and runs it down their throat. With the throw of the pass, always hanging there over the head of the defense. Here we go again. Ball at the 30 now with the kickoff. Well, we'll see if SC can measure up to it. Right their way back. Low boxer. Bounces off Conway's shoulder. Has it at the nine. Looked like a guy trying to cross Broadway and rush traffic hours. Didn't he? Yes. He's trying to keep from getting low bridged by a truck or something. You know, the big thing right now, the Trojans have to gather themselves. Here's Curtis Conway, a very fast individual, but when that ball's bouncing, it makes everybody look kind of awkward. He gets the ball here, and he luckily turns it upfield and saves the ball. Oh, Not no. too important whether he gained a lot of yards. Just get the ball down, and let's get the offensive team moving. Bernovich has completed two of his last 11 tosses. He's 7 of 16. Pitch back, tail back. Hoister. They have gotten a yard to the 24. One of the worst things you can allow happen is have a team down to let them come back because, boy, you just have to fight uphill to get their momentum down, and sometimes it's impossible. Burton, along with Hopkins, made the stop. Second down and about nine for the Trojans. SC with the ball on its own 24-yard line. Marinovich, play action, rolling to his right. He's got the receiver up the middle and misses Brad Banner badly. Threw it behind him. One of the things about a passing game the quarterback is on is it is majestic. When he's off, it looks terrible. Third down and nine at the 24-yard line. <laughs> SC trailing 21-17, third quarter about to close. And I tell you, the defense uh, needs some offensive help here. Oh my. Trojans move on offense. Uh, jumping up was Moody for 72. Be third and 14. Good ball. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. Repeat third down. Tom, let me tell you how important momentum is. The Trojans, the Wildcats don't match up Trojans man for man. The, definitely the Trojans have a better team. But when momentum gets into play, it's no question of talent. Now, who wants to win? And that's what happened. So the Trojans, who haven't done much right here in the third period, have seen a 17-7 lead disappear. And now as the third quarter is coming to a close, Marinovich, who hasn't been able to find any receiver, is looking at a third down and a 14 back at his 18-yard line. Shotgun. Marinovich to throw. Sets. Intersole. Obviously should have been intercepted. Should have been picked off by Burton, who's beside himself. And the crowd, homecoming or no, is turning a bit unruly. You can hear the boos as the third quarter comes to a close. 21-17 Arizona. We'll be back. 
As we start the fourth quarter, Arizona leads 21-17. These quarter notes are being brought to you by Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong. Check the stat. Two for the last 13 for Marinovich. Look at the first quarter. Since then, 218 yards for Arizona for SC 89. And Marinovich has 71 yards today at 338 last week. Now, it is quite easy to hang it on the broad shoulders of number 13. But, of course, he's not out there alone. It has been just a total turnaround for the Trojans in the third quarter. They led 17 to 7. And now Lewis is waiting to run one back again. Dale hits it. It's not very deep. Lewis at the 50. 45-40. Down to the 34-yard line. Ran through about five or six Cardinal shirts. And I tell you, when it goes bad, it goes bad, Mike Garrett. And, and Daryl Lewis and the Wildcats have all the momentum, and they are what they're doing, we talk about when a team has confidence, they run with reckless abandonment. And this is what Lewis does. He doesn't care. I'll take on any card and I'll go, I feel like we're going to win this game. Boy, is that tough running. They marked it at the 35, which is a pretty good spot for the Trojans. Lewis had it to the 34, I thought. First down, Arizona. Of course, Field, who's dazzled them with the option, is back in there again. Here's Veal again. I tell you, there were four cartel clad Trojans waiting for him, and he still slipped down to the 31 yard line. Second and six after a gain of four. Coach Toomey is telling uh, Beal they have not stopped the option. Let's keep running. Let's make it very simple. Let's not run ourselves right out of this ball game. If it ain't broke, don't fix, fix it. Let's go. Into the game today, Arizona was four and two, and two and two in the conference. SC was five and one. Two and one in conference play. Beal again. Oh no. Down the field with the ball at the three yard line. What a beautiful fake. Fake me out completely. What a run. Number 60. What they do is the quarterback gets the ball, places it down. Watch him. He'll place the ball down where the guard can pick it up. They ran this play earlier there, just about a couple of weeks ago. So it's first and goal, Arizona, at the Trojan three. Miguel likes his way to the one-yard line. Tom, as I looked at that play and replay very quickly, very quick shot, he may have just given it to the fullback and... Stridenick just kept going. He gave it to the fullback. The fullback has the ball. Now number 60 took it all the way down. Well, then, it's it's the old play where they just stop, put the ball on the, on the uh, behind the guard. The guard picks it up and starts running. And it's just, it's one of the colors, I don't know what you call it, but it's one of those plays where you definitely trip the, the defense. They call it a surprise. Into the end zone, touchdown Arizona. come out to score three touchdowns in the second half and they lead now 27 to 17. When you live by the trick play you may get beat by the trick play. Beal with a second touchdown of the afternoon and number six for Arizona and has revealed so far this year. Try for the extra point. It's up. It's good. 28 to 17 with 13 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Arizona, 15 point underdog, leads by 11. We'll be back. It's yours. Call it all the way. 28 17. Watch this one. Watch as Veal never takes the snap from center. The ball is set right on the ground. It's right underneath the center. And Warren just reaches down, picks it up, and runs with it. You know, it's, this is a tough one to see. No one in the, in the house knows where the ball is. No wonder Veal faked everyone out. He never had the ball once he got the ball after the snap. Now, now, there's, there's, Warren, there's, now there's six. He picks it up. The referees don't even know what to call on this one. And he's running. <laughs> oh, what a play. 
I'm informed that's the second time this year that Arizona's used that. Yes. Never more successfully than this time. So they've come on to erase a 17 to 7 SC lead at the intermission. And they lead 28 to 17. They've scored three touchdowns. Beal's gotten two of them. McGill has gotten one. 13 11 to go, and SC down by 11. And kickoff comes. Another low line drive. Bounces down, taken by Conway. Out to about the 29 yard line. Well, SC needs two big scores. Four plays, 35 yards. Beal with a one yard run. More importantly, they've got to get the offense cranked up. They've got time to do it. Marinovich comes out. So far, it has been a day of disaster for Todd. Tom, I'll give you a statistic. Warren has carried the ball twice as a guard. How many yards do you think he averaged per carry? About 40. <laughs> Marinovich throws. Almost intercepted. The flag is down. Maybe a penalty late hit. I'm going to tell you what Todd's doing and why he's throwing so badly. His feet are not moving. He's throwing while he's going back. Fundamentals are out the window, and it's really a confidence factor. Flag on the play will get the Trojans their biggest gain in a long time. Here we get a shot. He's back. Watch his feet. The They're passer. just dragging. He, he doesn't step forward. Therefore, the ball doesn't reach the, the potential receiver. At this point, I would put O'Hara in. What about Shane Foley? I'll put Shane Foley. I'll put my mother in there. Anybody. All right. The ball is out. The, the ball is out of the Trojan 44-yard line. First down. Over the middle for Vanna, the tight end, right through his hands. Statistics on Marinovich are almost like a like a nightmare, like a bad dream. 71 yards on seven of 19. He's had 17 yards through the air since the first period, and we're just into the fourth quarter and it's second and ten at the Trojan 44. And Arizona has a lead of 11 points. There's ample time to run the ball. There's no panic, and they're still trying to pass. Wellman hasn't caught a pass. Arizona 46-yard line. The last two pass patterns for the Trojans have been short. One to the, the tight end, now to Lockwood, and I think they're trying to give Todd some confidence, let him get a couple of completions and get back in the game. But I'm looking over at the down marker, and that is very, very close to a first down. But apparently it's inches shy, so it's third down and inches to go at the Arizona 44. Trojans going double tight end, Tom. So they come to the line of scrimmage in that formation. They've got Alec Mahorn in there as well. Third down and inches to go at the Arizona 46. And from where they have put that ball down, it looks like a first down. If they were to walk the chains in now, SC would get a first down. Now we've got somebody coming in. I think he's indicating it's a first down. I think the wild the line judge or the Wildcats are calling timeout. Time out. Arizona. Arizona. Well, I don't know why SC doesn't ask for a measurement. I tell you, I would. That ball is at the 46. 12.48 to go. SC trails by 11. Fourth quarter. Uh, we'll be back right after this. And inches to go at the Arizona 46 yard line. 12.48 remaining. SC led 17 to 7 at the intermission. They trail 28 17. Lockwood, first down to the 41. Wade made the stop for Arizona. Checking in for the Trojans. Morton comes in. Travis Hanna comes in, and Wallace comes in. That's indication they believe in their passing game, and they're going to die with it, bringing three receivers. I 
would think I'd have been happier if you said live or die. With I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> so quit Trojan. Shotgun. Marinovic in the flat. Boy, I tell you, Wallace caught it and got a whole face full of that defender. All the way in the end zone, nobody there covering Adam. Burton was over there and whacked Wallace. I don't think Wallace caught it after all, Tom. Apparently he takes not. a big hit here. It's hard to hold on the ball. Bang. Oh, that's Todd Burton putting a little knock a on him. Second and ten at the 41. Travis Hanna was in the end zone all alone. Nobody near him. But 40 yards away. Again the shotgun. Second and ten. The Arizona 41. Takes it to the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of six and bring up third and four. Parton reacting quickly as Marinovich tried to escape the rush with a rush of his own up the middle. Coming to you live from the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles with 11.55 to go in the fourth period, Arizona. Uh, fresh hold of an upset, leading USC 28-17. The Trojans with a third and four. Marinovich rolling to his left. Throws. Complete to Wellman at the 30 for a first down, and that's his first catch of the afternoon, I do believe. Wellman on that play just ran a, like a, a five-yard out. He goes out and takes the... Uh, Safety one on one there makes the catch. He looks for the first down mark and he gets it. Out of the game goes Jackson. That's Wellman, young senior from Westlake Village. 11.38 to go. Scott is in. Marinovich stays with the air game. Pass. Wellman again inside the 25 at about the 24, and then he is. Bulldoze to the turf by Alexander. Second and four after a pickup of six. Get a six yards. Bojnovic is getting his composure, it seems, and the way one way to help him is make sure the pass is not more than five or six yards, and he's just picking the defense. So 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 far, so good on this drive. Out of the huddle, up to the line of scrimmage. The Arizona 24. Second down and four. SC trying to fight back. Marinovich. Pass. Lockwood out of bounds. First down at the 17. At the 17. First down at the 17 yard line. There's Todd just looking back the same pattern. They threw the Wellman. They throw to the halfback now. That was hold on defense to knock him out of bounds. First down at the 17. 10.52 remaining. SC down by 11. Wellman wide to the right. Open side of the field. Scott to the left. Handoff. Lockwood. To the four-yard line. Alexander brings him down there. First and goal, Lockwood with 125 yards and a touchdown. Makes it first and goal at or about the five-yard line. This is what you call running the, passing the ball to set up the run. That's just a counter play. Lockwood gets a, a well of blocking from his offensive line, just starts struggling, takes on five guys. Hey, but the Trojans are moving. First and goal at the four. 125 yards, the second 100-yard-plus game. Has a touchdown. Lockwood on the sweep. No game. Second and goal at the four. On the sidelines, Toomey with the headset on. His team is up by 11. Smith down by 11. Second and goal. Mark it at the five now. Under ten minutes remaining. SC takes time. 
9.53 remaining in the game. The Trojans trail by 11. Timeout. Fourth quarter will be back after this. 28-17, 9.53 to go. Marinovich has finished his conversation with uh, head coach Larry Smith. Todd had a dismal second and third period. Things have picked up a bit with this drive that started on the Trojan 29, but got a big boost from a roughing the passer call, personal foul. What's happening, Tom, is they're making they're limiting Todd to one receiver. Therefore, he's not looking for his second and third people. Consequently, he's missing people wide open. Well, it's third down and goal. Only this time the ball is back at the eight-yard line. rolling to his right. Throws. Oh, my. Way too high, too far. No chance. Well, here comes Rodriguez out to see about three. Here you're going to see Todd. They're rolling to the left. That's one thing good. You get the pressure off. The, you get to put pressure on defense, but also you limit where you can throw the ball. There's good defense. He tries an impossible shot to Yanni Jackson. There's not a good chance. And Todd is throwing across his body now. It's a tough play. He has to lay it perfectly. Yanni Jackson just cannot reach far enough and stay in bounds. Rodriguez for the 25-yard field goal. He's already hit a 48-yarder. It's good. But it leaves the Trojans trailing 28 to 20. Eight-point deficit with 8.58 to go here in the fourth. You know, I wish our cameras had been a little bit more to the left on that replay. I think we'd have seen two receivers wide open in the end zone, including Wellman. You know, as we stated, when you limit your quarterback to the first guy because he's having a bad, bad day, the second and third receiver is not open, is wide open, and he doesn't see him, and it makes it tough. You know, this is a growing experience. He's a young quarterback. He's had his great days. And today, he's, uh, he's simply off. Well, I tell you, it's been quite a day here in the Pac-10. Washington hammers Stanford. UCLA losing to Cal. Coming up tonight on our prime ticket network, Pac-10 Game of the Week will be Arizona State and Oregon. That's coming up a little bit later right here. Same channel, Pac-10 Prime Ticket Network Game of the Week. Bill Stone and Don Heinrich are standing by for that one. Now Bates waiting to return it, standing in the middle of the field. 28-20, Arizona. Low line drive, bounces down. Bates gets a convenient hop. Back inside of the 30. Look at him run. Beautiful move. Clear up to midfield. Flag comes down. Runnister made the tackle, and there's a flag on the play. going to be a penalty, I think, against SC. No, I think it's against the Wildcats. 84 of the Trojans is running off the field, clapping his hands like something happened to him. Well, I don't think he won the lottery, so maybe you're right. <laughs> 84, Gideon Morrell. Was, must something happen once he uh, went out of bounds. Great return again by Bates. Here's the call, I think. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit by the receiving team. It'll be first and 25. They're gonna mark it back at the 35 yard line. It's a dead ball. Here it is. 
right there, that last little push. You can't push in this game. Back to the 35-yard line. 8.51 with first and 25 to go, and Arizona has the lead by eight points. If the Trojans should get the ball back, they've got a lot of making up to do. Look at that. He's one for three passing for minus one yard. But rushing, he's your worst nightmare. Huh? <laughs> the 39. Second and 21. Hopkins and Pace make the stop. Across the way, Todd Marinovich. Pensive and wondering. Think it's easy to play quarterback? <laughs> Better than that. Do you want to play quarterback? Wide to the right side is Vaughn. Second down and 21 at the 39-yard line. 68,000 are here. Beal again, backing up to throw. Throws it downfield. Pass is caught. Vaughn at the 30 at the 29. Holmes makes the stop. 32 yards. Very simple situation here. You, the team is catching up. There's Vaughn. He's going to run a post. He's one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with Holmes, and that's an impossible thing to ask a cornerback, but there it is. Terry Vaughn, who's a speedster, and Holmes pulls him down. So a big play faced with a second and 21. Beal responds, first and 10, at the Trojan 29. The pitch, love it. Breaks right through a couple of tackles, headed for the end zone, down at the seventh. Well, I tell you, Arizona State is just tearing the Trojans apart. Gibson makes the stop. First and goal at the seven. This is real simple. You know, we know you're going to run the, the wishbone offense. Let's, boy, but we're surprised on this one. They shouldn't. And, boy, does this running back just makes a good move, starts going, doesn't stop, and he just takes it to the Trojans inside the 10. So it's first and goal, Arizona. Talk about a couple of big plays. Here's Beal again. Touch back. Touchdown. Beal gets his third. his third of the game and his ninth of the year with 731. They go 65 yards in four plays. So the Trojans came to within eight. Now they're back 34-20. How quickly things changed. Last week they couldn't beat Oregon State and they're running through the Trojans tonight. You know, it must take some special kind of kid to sit on the sidelines for 30 minutes and then suddenly come in and score three touchdowns. And what a rapport these two guys must have. And what a job Toomey has done to keep two guys this talented, this satisfied, and able to play upon call to the best of their ability. You know, you look at Veal, he reminds you of Vince Evans, a man of character who had so many things go wrong when he was at a USC but never gave it up. And Ronald Veal is of the same, same mold, same character, and he is bringing it to the Trojans. Well, he certainly is. That's his third touchdown today, his ninth of the year. And SC against this wishbone, and the option, basically, is all but helpless. So it is now 35 to 20, SC down by 15. Not only is the scoreboard an important item, the clock at the pair style end is 7.31 to go. You know, Tom, if you ask the Wildcats, what's the most beautiful number today? They would say, guy, we're in number 10. What a second half that guy's had. All right, Costin to kick off again. It's another line drive. Take it at the 10. looked like a guy caught in a revolving door spun around two three times suddenly found that he was still on his feet so the kid from Hawthorne 
finally brought down by Costa, the guy that kicked off. Well, this is game running. He's not going to go down unless you wrap him. There he looks like he's going to go down, puts his hand down. Remember John Arnett? Boy, here we go. Curtis Conway's a little faster. Boy, he picks up a good game for the Trojans on their opening kickoff return. All right, SC has the ball at their 38-yard line. First and 10. Marinovich to throw. Sideline, oh! Intercepted. Intercepted. Picked off by Tolan. Rolling. You know, Tom, this is the same play they used to go down the field. Wildcats are not stupid. They're going to take the, the short pass away. Todd does not step up, does not get any velocity on the ball. He's just kind of just winging it out there. Here he goes. Watch him. He doesn't step up. Look at him. It's just like a, a, a arm throw. Therefore, the defender can come through. He makes the interception. It's Wildcats ball. Well, that's two interceptions he's thrown today and has been lucky that he hasn't thrown maybe two more. You know, Bobby Wallen feels awfully happy because this is a backup player who makes a great play. This may be the clincher for the Wildcats. Well, I don't know if the issue was in doubt even up to then. And they lead by 15. And now, Beal again, pitching back. The Trojans drop the runner. Love it. At about the 38-yard line, gain of one, second and nine at the 38. Ross leading the defense. Well, I tell you, SC was a 15-point favorite coming into this ball game, And Bobby Rowland with the second interception, just the latest in a long line of Wildcat heroes on display here tonight. Here's Ronnie Veal at the Trojan 38-yard line. the middle. Cruchet is there. One thing's overlooked when you look at Trojan defense now. They're just pulling people, not really shoulder tackling. Can't forget they've been out in the field a long time this second half. They've really been out there a long time, Mike. That's a good point. They've been battered all over this field. The longest stint they had on the sidelines was the drive Marinovich put together that ended up in another field goal. There's Gibson. There's Willie McGinnis. There's Kirk Barber. 547 to go. I'm sure Beal will use every second he can getting this playoff. Beal hands off. Straight ahead. Hampton. Excuse me, it was Lovett playing, not Hampton. Mark it down at the 30. And it's going to be fourth down at about a yard. Scott Ross is coming through here, and this is the man of character nine. Scott Ross hits Veal, and watch how they talk to each other. Mutual combatants, they feel very good about each other. Good play on defense. 47-yard field goal try by Costin. 35-20 Wildcats looking to put it out of sight, if it isn't already. Long enough, but wide. He's missed a couple. He's beside himself. They may make him walk home. He feels like they're going to make him walk back to his two sides. You know, early in the uh, second quarter, they had a chance to do that and kick a field goal, and they decided they would uh, punt it instead. This time, they don't, they're not worried about the Trojans having field position, so they try and kick a field goal and put three more on the board. Well, 4.51 remaining. SC's down by 15 points. The Trojans would need two eight-point touchdowns to pull this one up. Let's not forget about Pullman two, uh, last year when the Magician went they down. They only needed a touchdown and a two-pointer there, one eight-pointer. Well, there he stands, Marinovich. Been a tough afternoon for the young quarterback. Upfield to Lockwood. Takes it to the Trojan 44. That's a pickup of 14. First and 10 at the 44. Clock stops while they move the chain. SC is going to have to get into its hurry up offense. Again, the shotgun. Four-man rush by Arizona. 
Marinovic downfield. Almost intercepted again. All alone on this side of the field was Larry Wallace. All alone. Play was broken up by Bobby Roland. Roland was there, had an interception a moment ago. Well, I tell you, Arizona's got enough heroes to go around. Lewis with some outstanding defensive play, including kick returns, interceptions. Beal with a brilliant second half. Three touchdowns by the young quarterback. Marinovic. Pass complete. Wellman at the 50. Might give him progress to the 48, which would be kind of a generous marking. Eight yards on the play. It'll be third down and third down in about run along to. Holt made the stop. I don't think I know what that's all about. Ball is at the 48-yard line, and they're... There's a flag across the way. Well, they've got a player shaken up down here. 4-10 is the time remaining. That's Holt. Yeah, I think they're asking questions like, what's the time of the day? Uh, is this Saturday or? Yes. Use uh, Tom Kelly's words of last week. Uh, he's answering the phone. Yeah. He's going off the field, and we don't mean to minimize an injury, saying, boy, it's noisy in this helmet. <laughs> Marinovich to throw. Downfield. Wellman, and he loses his helmet. Boy, what a hit he took. And that'll stop the clock at the 33-yard line, first and 10. 15 yards. Boy, you think Wellman isn't hearing the phone ringing. Mm. It was 29, Todd Burton, that laid the hit on, on Wellman coming in on a crossing pattern. And the ball's hanging up there, so you can't put your receiver in more vulnerable position than he's just open to any kind of hit because he has no body uh, lean one way or the other. And Wellman and Todd uh, Burton lays the hit. Helmet flies off, and uh, ringing starts. Held on to the ball, didn't he? a major accomplishment with a hit like that. Look at him. He lays that receiver on. That's very dangerous. And I'll remind our viewers that Arizona State and Oregon will be the prime ticket network Pac-10 game of the week. Roman's all right. We're happy to report. That game will follow this telecast tonight. Four minutes remain here at the Coliseum and the Trojans trying to erase a 15-point deficit. Like the impossible dream. A run of it. A pass complete. Jackson should have stepped out of bounds. 350, though. The clock stops as he gets the first down. First and 10, and the ball is at the 20 yard line. At the 21. Marcel Wade, Gino Alexander on the tackle for the Wildcats. 350. Would be interesting if SC should score and get two and then try an onside kick, huh? Yes. Marinovic holding to his right. Sacks throws it for the end zone for Wellman. He's got him for the touchdown. Marinovic to Wellman, the little guy who was belted about. Still kind of shaken up down there off the field of play. Well, here comes the medical staff again. You know, he took that vicious hit, Mike. Came back after one play out. Caught the ball for the touchdown. Now, two points. He also took a hit when he caught the ball in the end zone. There was a late hit there. This time, Larry Smith is coming across to see about it. Some players you don't do that, and other ones you know that don't really ever complain. Larry Smith is kind of worried because, uh, as we know, Gary Woolman is not a complainer. He's a toughie. Pats him on the thigh. You're okay. He must feel that uh, Woolman's going to be under control. 
Here's the play. They're rolling out. Wellman, there's like a pick play. The outside receiver goes across the middle. Wellman comes outside and just swings wide. There he's wide open on the swing. He catches it. Now Holt hits him and just throws the weight on him. They hit, I think it's like a shoulder. That's when you separate shoulders on when you land that way. Well, you know, um, he was hit off the field of play, really. They could march off a 15-yard penalty after uh, for a late off. hit. Yeah, yes, they could, but I haven't seen a flag. And... Byron Hansen is there and Jack Ward, Doctors Deal and Doctor uh, Chester Semple. The way he landed it. It looks like he uh, jammed his shoulder, maybe his right shoulder. Dr. Francis is up here. I should maybe ask him. Gary Wellman, young man out of Westlake Village. It looks like maybe he's unconscious when they do that, Doc. Isn't that right? Well, I saw him blink his eyes a couple of moments ago, Mike. But they look at your eyes, and I guess they can see every nerve in your body to determine the pupils, right. I'm taking the lead from Dr. Uh, uh, Francis as I talk to you. Is it every nerve or blood vessel in your eye, Doc? You see the nerve and the blood vessels. Okay. I know they're the windows of your soul. I don't know about how much of your body you can see. It's about to get up. Sitting up. Well, as we watch Gary Wellman, let's talk about what is left to be done. Helping him do his feet. Those left here of the nearly 60,000 on hand for homecoming, give him a round of applause. He's not very big, but he is tough. Uh, you go for one and then get the onside kick and hope for eight, uh, or do you go for the two and then get an onside kick and tie the game? Well, I would go for two, then if you score again, go for two again. Well, you'd rather have a chance to win or lose rather than lock up a tie. Well, if you tie, it doesn't matter because Washington has to lose twice. Well, but if you lose twice, Washington has to lose three times. The way Washington's playing is very unlikely that they'll lose. Going for two points. Foley throws. Arizona State's got the ball. What a strange play. What a strange play. Yeah, it was a trick play. And it didn't work. SC gets six. They're down by 11. 35 make it uh, nine. Down by nine. We'll be back in a moment. Surrounded by a lot of uh, attentive people, trainers, uh, medical people, the like, Todd Wellman appears to be all right. Now the play for two points. Marinovic uh, waving to one of his receivers as if to lead the defense off guard actually comes in motion. And now the snap is going to be to Shane Foley, which we didn't see. Now all of a sudden Foley's got the ball and throws it right into that crowd of white jerseys. He was looking for the tight end coming from the backside, Tom, on a crossing well, pattern. But uh, Arizona expects an onside kick. The Trojans uh, need nine points to tie the game. 3.44 to go. Oh, my. That onside kick by Rudders drum went out of bounds at the SC 23-yard line. Is Halloween this week or next week? No, I, I do think that you live by the trick, you die by the trick, and now the tricks are going against you, and you look kind of ridiculous. One time when you have a team meeting with your coaching staff and you says, uh, who called the last trick on that one? That is the first I've been watching football a long time. I've never seen an onside kick from your 35-yard line that gives the ball to the opposition at your 23-yard line. 
Let me show you how that works, Tom. What you do is you soccer kick it. You get a rotation opposite to where it wants to go. It goes half moon to your goal line. And if your guys don't fall on it real quickly, you may lose even more yards. Arizona must be just laughing up their sleeve at these gifts. Bates straight ahead. Clock running now, 3.38. What a strange game for the Trojans. What a strange game. Larry Smith standing there, almost a grin on his face. What a tough afternoon for him. Dick Toomey over there with arms folded. Says, no, blessed are they who expect nothing. He's, not talking, to, disappointed, he's huh? talking to the uh, people in the press box, and he says, I think we got this. I think we got it. He's getting his quotes ready for the press. <laughs> I don't blame him. What a second half his team has had. Well, second down and uh, ball at nine at the 22. Here's Veal on the option. Down to about the 18-yard line. It'll be third and five at about the 18. Clock showing 248. SC down by nine. Total domination by this man. Three touchdowns scored by Beal here in this second half. He's got 62 yards on 11 carries and three touchdowns. Clock is running at 228, 227. SC with two timeouts, 18 first downs to 16 by Arizona. But the Trojans on the short end down by nine and their chances of coming back very slim. Beal is gonna run it and throw it. He's just killing time back there, Mike. All the way back at the 29 for a loss of 11. We'll make it fourth and 16 at the 29. Barber got him there. SC stops the clock at 2.04. This is one of the times you talk on the sidelines and you say there's no explanation for this. 204 remaining in the ball game. Arizona leads by nine. We'll be back right after this. Two minutes, four seconds remaining. USC down by nine. Ronnie Beal with a fourth down at the Trojan 30-yard line. SC used a timeout. So they've got uh, one remaining. Beal will use as much time as possible, but of course, they'll have to do it scampering around start till the ball is snapped. Next home game, November 3rd here, the Trojans against California. Clock isn't moving. I don't know if Beal knows that or not. Hands it off to Lovett. He's dropped in the, at the line of scrimmage. And SC, I think, is using its last time out now. So the Trojans are down by nine. In first and ten, USC from the 30-yard line. Back in 1981, Arizona beat SC 13 to 10. Larry Smith coached the Wildcats that day. It's the second time Arizona has won in this 17-game series. Marinovich over the middle. Caught by Spears. Clock is moving. SC still has a timeout left. See in a hurry up offense to the 38. I don't know how you get nine points in a minute and 40 <laughs> seconds. Marinovich going to be hit. Pull down. Clock running with a minute 30. Well, it's been a big afternoon for Arizona. Down 17 to 7 at the intermission. They come rolling back behind Beal who didn't play in the first half. He runs for three touchdowns. Lewis with a great kick return. Another interception. And the Wildcats simply outplayed the Trojans in periods three and four. With a minute 27 remaining, SC is down by nine. So the Trojans will go to five and two. Arizona will go to five and two. SC will be two and two in the conference. Arizona will be two and two. UCLA was a loser today. Washington now, more than ever, looks like a lot to order Rose Bowl tickets. 
Next week, SC at Arizona State. Mike and I will be there. And then on November 3rd, the Trojans are back home against Cal. And Cal is a, a rejuvenated ball club. Bruce Snyder's got him playing well. Russell White. Hey, it's going to be a season, won't it? I'll remind you, coming up next, we've got the Pac-10 football game of the week. Oregon is playing uh, Arizona State. And we'll be going up there to Eugene in, uh, well, a minute and 27 seconds. Phil Stone, Don Heinrich, and Bill McDonald are chomping at the bit to tell you about the Ducks and the Sun. Marinovich to throw. The rush steps up. Still running with it at the 40. They jerk him down at about the 40-yard line. Alexander and Parker, minute 12 remaining. Fourth down. But all of this uh, really academic. Dennis Benishin reminds me that watching Arizona today, especially in the second half, how can one believe Oregon State hammered him 35-21 last week? Fourth down for Marinovich and company. Excuse me, they've made it a first down now. All right. Down by nine and very little time. Throws it downfield in the crowd. Intercepted. Picked up by Lewis. Lewis will be down at about the 46. Moody made the stop. And that throw by Marinovich is kind of atypical of what has happened to the Trojans in this second half after a 17-7 halftime advantage. I hearken back to think of my prophetic words, Mike Garrett, to you. This game isn't over by any stretch of the imagination, though the Trojans led by 10. And indeed, they're losing now by 9. And I don't know if Arizona will bother whether there's a player hurt on the field. Marinovich was 18 of 35 today, and three times he was intercepted. One touchdown pass. Forty-one seconds remain, and the clock is ticking away. Burt was the injured player, came off the field under his own power. Arizona, with uh, no timeouts left for the Trojans, is content to let the clock run along. Across the way, the band plays Conquest, but it won't be for the Trojans today. It'll be for the Wildcats of Arizona. What a great win for Toomey. That's Vaughn down there. Half that team is from Southern California. They play like they were happy to be in Los Angeles. Game is over. Arizona pulls off a major upset, 35-26 over USC. That's the final. A reminder that coming up next is the Pac-10 Game of the Week, Oregon against Arizona State in Eugene. Stay tuned for that. For Mike Garrett, I'm Tom Kelly. Thanks for being with us. 60,000 disappointed homecoming fans here at the Coliseum. Watch the Wildcats beat the Trojans by nine. Good night.